Ever have that one friend who loves something you know nothing about? Something you wish they could explain better? Well, this isn't that show. Welcome to Drunk Fandom, the show where we have a drunk person explain something they love to a sober friend who is clueless. Fandom contains swears and other not safe for work content. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. The Fierce Ferrets do not condone excessive drinking, but if you do, please drink responsibly. Enjoy the show! Hi everybody, it's Gideon. Welcome to the last episode of the first season of Drunk Fandom, Cocktail Tower. I keep really having that hard pause on cocktail. <laughs> um, it's been a wild ride for season one, and we're wrapping it up with Cocktail Tower, or Clock Tower. <laughs> That clam? Yeah. Uh, what are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking the amazing Twisted Peas. Twisted Peas. The Twisted the teas. Mm-hmm. This is actually, this is a raspberry one. So, like, we bought a variety pack because this is, like, the only quote-unquote beer I can drink. And I call it that because they come in, like, a, you know, a six-pack mm-hmm. beer format. And I like them, so they're cheap to I buy. I, I, I don't gotta I mix them. I didn't know them. that the six-pack was a format. <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying, you know, speaking of cocktail tower, when I go to a bar and I get a cocktail, like, that's what I like, and I don't really have that in a beer format. Mm -hmm. Beers suck, I'm sorry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Um, Okay, so clearly you've you've had a lot, which is good. (laughs) Um, A lot. Twisted teas! If you don't like beer, this is the option for you. It's a tea, and it's it's amazing. The Fierce Ferrets are not being paid to advertise. Yeah, well, I like beer, so you can fuck off, Misty. Well, beer yeah. can fuck off for nah, people like nah, me. Nah, nah, <laughs> no. Okay, so, um, what do I know about Clock Tower? I keep almost saying Cock Tower every time. Because uh, of the stupid Well, towers are phallic, so yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's really just all over there. Um, so for Clock Tower, I know relatively little. There's scissors. And I believe the third not one the, had a not magical the lesbian girl. kind of scissoring. No, like, no, not, not like literal scissors. Like literal, like <laughs> like literal. Yeah, <laughs> scissors. You making the motion doesn't make it better. Well, yeah, this this illustrates non-lesbian scissoring. Oh, okay. Like lesbian would be. No, like, don't make the. Yeah, <laughs> he's making the motion. Like that, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. What do you know? I, I said, said, is that it? Do you know I, I said I believe there's some sort of magical girl moment in three. <laughs> because I've seen gifts. Yeah. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> Alright, so tell me about Clock Tower. What does Clock Tower mean to me? I'm so glad you asked, Gideon. Mm. What well, Clock Tower means to me. So when I was a wee you child... You just said Cock Tower, by the way. Did I? Oh, no. I'm really drunk. So when I was a wee lass... I almost said lad. <laughs> so You're wee... still a wee lass, by the way. When I was... Shut up. When I was a wee lass, back in the day were PS2 games. You could get them for like 20 bucks. You remember that? 20 bucks. Yeah. Buy a game. So... You know they still have that today, they're just called Greatest Hits. Or are they 30? They're not to- no, they're usually full price! No, no. Yeah! You can get older games for like- 20. Greatest Hits is usually like, it has everything, no? A- anyway. So well, that's Game of the Year you're thinking um, of. You know, I was really into to Resident Evil when I was a kid. Yeah. Which then evolved into Silent Hill. And yeah. then I needed a new horror fix. Because Talk about I- the most horrifying uh, Pokemon after that. transformation. So the first horror game I actually bought in the Clock Tower series was Clock Tower 3. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Clock Tower 3. So Clock Tower 3 was supposed to revive the series, uh, but fun story, they didn't market it at all, so it died. Um, yeah, that sounds... Which is a shame, because they put a did, huge... Did Capcom do it? Uh... Oh. The one note she I've... didn't take. You know, I want to say Konami, but I feel like I'm wrong. Time to Publisher. Think. No, you're right, Capcom. Yeah. Oh, I should know that shock. because... No, I should, fucking shock. I should know that because market. of Haunting Grounds, which I'm going to get into. Yeah. Because Haunting Grounds can go die in a fire, mm-hmm. which I'm going to get into. 
Uh, <laughs> I haunting grounds. Haunting grounds go die in a fire. I'm gonna get into that. Bullshit. So, so mm -hmm. Clock Tower Three was supposed to revive the franchise, and it didn't no. because they didn't market it like at all. And even and they spent so much money, they had motion cap and like everything in this game. <laughs> they spent so much money on this game just for it to die horribly, and it wasn't a terrible game. And I'll get into it when we get to there, but um. So when I watched it, you know, I wasn't terribly impressed, but I was intrigued by its backstory. Mm -hmm. And this is what got me started on really getting into Clock Tower and what it was about. And it's a sh So now getting into Clock Tower. The, the shame about Clock Tower is it has the most unique premise I have seen in a horror game series. And so much can be taken advantage of it. Like, I really wish Clock Tower 3 had sold well, because I would love to see where it was going now. Um, it had two spiritual successors, which I'm going to go over, even though they're technically not related to yeah, the series. Yeah. And that's Haunting Grounds and Night Cry. I'm going to discuss them at the end. Um, but we're going to start with Clock Tower 1. Or actually, no, I lied. We're going to start with Clock Tower and its horrible translated title base. Like, like a lot of games that came from Japan, the title sequences of Clock Tower is completely fucked up, especially depending on where you look at it. Um... So, the official timeline of Clock Tower is the first Clock Tower game, which was on the Super Fancom. That's how old this is. It was on the Super Fancom. Yeah. And that was called... Wasn't that the Super Nintendo? No, that was before the Super Nintendo. No, the Famcom... It was before the Super Nintendo. No, that was the Super Nintendo. No, it was before the Super Nintendo because it was in black and white. Oh. Yeah. The Super Fancom, we have one. Okay. It's a clunky, weird thing. Well, aren't they all? Well, yeah. Um... Like, have but, you seen an Xbox One? It's a clunky, weird thing. It is a clunky, weird thing. So, Clock Tower has go, has actually had, like, has been released three times, the original Clock Tower. It's called Clock Tower The First Fear. What? Um, Capcom released a game multiple times? The same exact game? Across multiple generations? What? So... I'm shocked at this! The official, t the official timeline... Yeah. Officially, is you got Clock Tower The First Fear... Then you've well actually you've it's just it's just I'm Clock sorry, Tower One. Clock Tower Clock the first fear is Clock Tower fear. One. They're the same thing. Then you've got Clock Tower Two. Uh -huh. Then you have Clock Tower Ghost Head. Then you have Clock Tower Three. And then you have Haunting Grounds and Night Cry, which are spiritual successors. And they're okay. considered part of the timeline for being spiritual successors. Now in America So basically the partition participation. In America, right? you have Clock Tower the First Fear. That's clock Tower game. 1, Clock Tower 2, Clock Tower 3, and then Haunting Grounds and I Cry. So in America, Clock oh. Tower Ghost Head was rebranded as Clock Tower 2. I'm sorry, the name was Ghost Head? Yes, because... Was it made by an 8-year-old? It may as well have been. It's so bad. Oh, well, that, that's... It's terror. It's the worst game of the franchise. But With a um, name like Ghost Head, I was... Expecting but the most Clock vividing Tower... Oscar-winning performances. So Clock Tower on the PS1 is supposed mm -hmm. to be Clock Tower 2, but in America, it was branded as Clock Tower 1. And that's why Ghost Head became Clock Tower 2, even though it's a piece of shit. <laughs> and then you have Clock Tower 3, yeah. It's a mess. So when you say it's a piece of shit, do you mean, like, literally you'd open the, oh God, the it's... case? And... I can't wait to talk about it, because it may as well have been a seeming pile of dog shit. It's oh, well, terrible. Let's, let's, let's start at the um, beginning. So we're gonna start, I just wanted to clarify that, because I may screw up the names because of the horrible rebranding. So I'm going to try and keep up with that, but okay. I'm really inebriated. Yeah, so we're going to start a clock Now time. I understand more why you went into it for like five <laughs> yeah, minutes. Yeah, I'm going to be so inebriated. Because okay. I, I, you, you have just explained everything to me in great detail. I'm sober and so, I'm like, what the fuck? So the best way I can describe it is, is to remember by platform. Mm -hmm. There's one SNES game slash Famicom game. So the Famicom game was re-released on the SNES and then we released again on PS1. So that's Clock Tower, The First Fear. It's, do you remember, I know you've seen screenshots of it, because I used to ask you to go oh, yeah. play what, what is the first one again? Clock Tower, The First Fear is technically the type, the American title is Clock Tower, The First Fear. Is what second we, one is just Clock Tower? The second one is just Clock Tower in America, it's just Clock Tower. Uh -huh. And that's Clock Tower 2, Clock Tower 3. That's it. Okay, so now, okay, See, I wrote America, it down, yeah. so I don't get confused. <laughs> well, I'm gonna rediscuss so, it, but Okay, yeah. well, let's let's get off All right. Japan and uh, America's English Well, the poor UK is missing half the games. I, like, they're even more confused than yeah, us. I mean, well, the UK <laughs> probably isn't like, oh, butter biscuits. We haven't All found right. our clock towers. Clock Tower 1. Clock Tower 1 is... Oh, man. Clock Tower 1... 
is so brilliant, and I would love a I honestly literal... thought you were going to say bad. No, Clock Tower 1 is the best game in the series. Okay. It's really good, and it's really simple. Like, if you're in the retro games and you like horror, you need to play Clock Tower 1. It's so good. And okay. it's really simple, but it's good. And, um... Simple, but good. The best way I can describe Clock Tower 1, the I Clock Tower joking. series, <laughs> is it starts... Actually, I wanted to say this before, but that's how drunk I am. Clock Tower as a series starts as you... Versus serial killers. And it ends with you as a magical girl versus serial killers. Well, it starts you know, as a serial I, killer nightmare. I really kind of now wish there's an anime of that. <laughs> right? It starts as a serial killer terror fest and ends as a serial killer terror fest, but you have magical girl powers. That's how Clock Tower evolves. So... The first game. I think I would love it if, if if the main character was a dude, but still had right? magical girl powers. Oh man. Okay, so Clock Tower One, right? Clock Tower One is an old like nowadays. If you've ever played like Claire or Lone Survivor, it is the first, like the first game where you play as a side-scrolling point-and-click adventure. Yeah. Like, it was like the first one of its kind. Yeah. And it was so revolutionary in the fact you start as a girl named Jennifer, which is confusing because that's my name, but her name is Jennifer. Your name is Bat Clam. <laughs> I changed it. I literally went to Town Hall, paid him $1,000. It was not a fiscally sound decision. But guess whose name is now Bat Clam? Because they just bitch constantly about having a common name. You. God, I love Clock Tower. I, uh, you I'm know sorry, what, you I'm said just... clock tower, but I heard cock tower. Well, that's because you've got cocks on the brain, basically. Wow. Uh, so, so, clock tower one starts with your, in, which this is skeevy as fuck, by the way. So uh, you're... No, is it like, like, okay, is it skeevy as fuck, as in like, you've just been ousted on Twitter as a, a sexual deviant? Yes. Oh! So, so, so AMC's gonna your, drop your shows and stuff. Your name is Jennifer, and you're traveling with your uh -huh. your your three... No. Orphan sisters. You're an orphan. You're traveling. Wait, 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 wait. Are you all like? We're like, all orphans. We're all orphans. But are, are is are you sisters in like a? You're my sister. Yeah. Or like literally, Not like literal I sisters. need I need a liver transplant. You you're my type. They might be her type, but they're not from the same family. Okay. They're all orphans. Ooh, or they're being escorted parents. by their headmaster Mary from the orphanage because some some old rich dudes adopting them, and they're all like fifteen. Only girls. Uh, <laughs> so it's old rich dude. Oh, <laughs> no. That's how no, this game starts. It's... No. That's not, that's not kosher. And Mary, that's Mary... like red flags everywhere. So it starts off with this cutscene, and Jen's like. Wait, no, no, no. Is this house that the rich person's like mansion. in the middle of? Is it's it in the middle mansion. of nowhere? Yeah, you're in the woods. Like this it's is the middle Resident of Evil. nowhere, yeah. and is like the nearest town, yeah. like an hour away. Yeah. Oh lord. So, so just to start off, the mansion is called mm. the Clock Tower. That's where the title comes from because That's it has a, a dumb clock name for a mansion. You can tell the guy who made this game just wanted to call the game Clock Tower and had no better reason. Does oh, the mansion man have a, an actual like? Big Ben. -esque it does. Clock? Yeah, it has a clock tower in the mansion. Yeah, the game ends in the clock tower. I'm gonna get into that. Spoiler, but right. it's fine. But yeah, so it has a giant clock tower. It's called Clock Tower. This guy named his mansion the Clock Tower. <laughs> That's how it's said. To I... Okay. All right. So Jen is excited because fuck orphanages, I, I guess. Like, well, yeah, no. Most of them. You always Statistically, bad, you always it's a horrible bad place to grow stories about orphanages, right? Well, okay, so here's the reason why. Yeah. Oof. Funding for orphanages are not, like, a priority anywhere. So basically, they're just left with scraps. Which and, I just want to reiterate. Yeah. For anyone who actually works there and is a good person, like, thank you. Well, I don't want to sound imagine, like I'm picking orphanages. It's not orphanages. like the, the orphanage in fucking... <laughs> Skyrim, where it's an old lady being like, no one's gonna ever adopt you, you're terrible. You're um, the worst. So, I'm not getting into it, but there's a lot of theories about this orphanage, so I'm not gonna get into it. So That they, like, traffic children to <laughs> weird, creepy it. mansions? So, so Mary's escorting his kids, and Jen is like, oh man, Mary, who's adopting us again? Can you tell me all about it again? And she's like, oh, Jen, you rapscallion. You gotta stop asking me, really. I'm an so, adult, and you're an annoying child. <laughs> Oh my god, so she basically just, like, without even looking at the child, Jen, shut the fuck up. 
He's like, his name is Mr. Barrows. Oh, that's right. So, in this this entire series... Mr. Much Barrow like, sounds like someone you'd hear about on Investigative Discovery. So, I'm going to bring up, because it's going to get confusing by three. So, again, back going on the translation error thing. Uh-huh. So, the Barrows later gets called the Burrows, but they're the same family. So, if you hear oh. me call them the Burrows, it's the same family. Um, okay, no. <clears throat> after the events of Clock Tower 1, their fucking rich ass probably changed it and thought... We'll be the Burrows now. It's one letter difference. Also, no one will ever fucking get that. Uh, also, they're they're British. I thought you should know. Like the first game, it's alluded it takes place outside of Britain, but the bur- the Barrows slash Burrows are British, and that's gonna be important later. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah. So apparently in Japan, it's supposed to be the Burrows, but when it got translated over, it became the Barrows. Mm-hmm. So it's the Barrows up until like three, and then they're like, oh, we should obey Japanese. Naming conventions and go back to Burroughs. So it confused everybody. They're the same family. So much like Star Wars, it's about one family fucking up the entire, like, the entire world, basically. Oh, man. <clears throat> you basically just described all of Star Wars. <laughs> did, yeah. Because that's not wrong. Um, so anyway. So, um, Mr. Bear is supposedly adopting these three 15... These Mr. Three B. Four. I'm sorry, these four 15-year-olds... This four fifteen year old girl. What year does this take place in? Did I write that down? It's in like the in like the eighties. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so the game, yeah, it came out in like the eighties. Well, the game came out. Let me go to the first game. And that was a mosquito, in case you were out. wondering. Okay, <clears throat> so no, I just you know because uh, apparently everybody in the eighties and beyond in had the horrible. It came out in 1995, sense. my bad. So it's in the 90s. It came out in 1995. Again, still horrible sense. Like, <clears throat> I know. What is... Th- okay, please continue. So they get to the house. So they get to the house, and they're all in the living room. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's Jennifer, Laura, Anne, and Lot. For the four characters. I'm sorry, Lot? Lot. L-O-T. And Lot is clearly like a... Is it a placeholder name? No, she looks like a dude. A lot of people thought Lot was a boy at first. Lot is a girl. Well, they're little teenagers. No, Teens she's got, are... like, a butch haircut. Like, she she looks literally looks like a boy. Oh, okay, But she's got yeah. boobs. She's a girl. Okay. Also, Lot's the coolest one, I'm just saying. The other two are bitches. Um, yeah. They're all sitting there, and Mary's like, I'm gonna go get Mr. Barrows! And she leaves the room. That's her. That's basically her voice. Okay. So they're all chilling. And, you know, you can talk to them... And Laura's like, Jen, I don't give a shit. You can go away. You suck. I, don't, I hate Laura. She's the worst. And, like, okay. But Laura's, like, that popular chick who you can't stand. And then wow, Lot, they even have clicks at the orphanage. They do, yeah. 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 Jen Jen is the character who wants to be accepted by everyone. No, so okay. she's taken advantage of. She's, she's literally me. She's literally me. She even looks like me. I'm not gonna get into that, but she, like, That's back when I had long hair, she, like, legit looks like me. It's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, they also made a movie that no. we should watch. It's called, like, Critters. It's literally, like, it's called Critters, but it's basically based off Clock Tower. It's basically Clock Tower the movie, but I'm not gonna get into it. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. So, in any case, so they're chilling there, and they're like, Jen... Go find Mary. We don't feel like leaving. We're lazy bitches. Go find Mary. She's taken forever. I want to be adopted already and have a bedroom in this bitchin' mansion. Because the mansion looks amazing. So Jen's like, alright, I'm gonna push over. I'll go look for Miss Mary. I mean, if you're gonna be on an investigative discovery, you'd hope the mansion looks good. One of the coolest things about Clock Tower 1 is it's basically the earliest form of Until Dawn I've ever seen. Yeah. This game has over ten endings. Wow, for a PlayStation For a era. for an SNES game. This is an SNES game, Gideon. Oh, that's right. PlayStation's this, like three years This is Super this. Fancom, Super Nintendo, like, bullshit. Yeah. So, when you leave the room, you hear a blood-curdling scream. Mary? And you're like, well, shit. And you come back and everyone's gone. The room's empty. And you're oh. like, uh... Oh, you're all uh, Y'all left me. So, you're basically exploring the mansion. You ever play a Capcom game? Like, yeah. literally never leave the room when there are people there. Because so if you go back into that room, they're gone. Basically. There are two ways to go at this point that start the chain of events of bullshit. I always forget the one way. But the most common route taken is you find a bathroom, and that is where Anne is hanging, and she has been murdered by a serial killer 
who jumps out of the bathtub. She's hanging in a bathtub and there's water. And you're like, hey, Laura, you're dead. And wait, then Laura's Sister dead or Anne is Laura. dead? Laura. Oh, wait. One of the yeah, girls. Yeah, it's Laura because she's the blonde. Because you're like, Laura? And then Scissor Man comes out and he's like, I've got scissors! And you're like... Wait, is that... Did, did, did like, Jen be like, don't run with those! Don't run with those! So, so Scissor Man comes out of the bathtub and chase you. So, so, there's another route where instead you can find Anne dead. There's basically, the game starts when you find either Laura or Anne dead. Cool. Uh, and most commonly Laura's found because she's in the closest room to the main hall. She's in one of the bathrooms. It's, like, right next to the main hall. So, typically speaking, most playthroughs find Laura dead first. And she's a bitch. Who cares? Basically. So, I'm sorry. Hey, that was, that was mean. She's people, 15. That was mean. Not, not really. Um, so, do you encounter the serial killer of the game, Scissor Man? Let me tell you. Uh, I actually did look into something about this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just now, Laura apparently <clears throat> used to laugh at homeless people, so let's not even give oh, a shit. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. It's a fun story. So, so Scissor Man, by the way, is not a man. He's like your age. He's Scissor Boy, but they call him Scissor Man. What? Okay, you said my age, like no, no, age. yeah, Jennifer's no, I was age. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm a man. Uh, like I am a grown adult, <clears throat> but so Scissor. Uh, but you know what? Scissor Boy doesn't sound great. No. Scissor Man <clears throat> doesn't even sound better, but... So this is... I want to bring that up because it's really important. Because you hide in a lot of, like, really easy-to-find locations. But Scissor Man is, like, a 15-year-old deformed child. So he really... He, he misses you really easily. Would you say Scissor Guy? We can say Scissor Guy. Scissor but Guy. But I, I really want to point out he's a kid. He's a deformed, like, basically dumb kid. And that's really important. I'm going to bring up why much uh. later. Right. So, <clears throat> the whole game you're running from him, you can find all of your sisters dead, basically. Is the, is the sis are the scissors real, or are they yeah, part of his Yeah, they're giant gardening shears. Oh. They're, like, as big as his body. They're fucking huge scissors. Why do you need shears that big? So, in any case, he, he the whole game is you avoiding him while trying to find out where Miss Mary is, where your sisters are. Uh, if you don't find except any- Except that bitch, Laura. Except that bitch, Laura. So, if, you can actually not trigger any of the death scenes, and they'll all be al alive at the end. It's not the canon ending. The canon ending is they all die. Actually, that's not true. Lot dies no matter what. Um, unfortunately, even though she's the cool one. Um, Lot either saves you from Scissor Man at one point, or you find her being sacrificed to Scissor Man. Um, because surprise, surprise, when you find Miss Mary, she drugs you- and puts uh, you in a cell where Mr. Barrows is. Her husband, who she has locked up and is starving to death. Why? Because he was against her cultist bullshit. Oh. Sister. She's a cultist. Uh, Surprise. And what, what is this the cult of? Um, so Scarring in future games, children? it's not discussed much in this game. But in future games, you realize there are actually statues of her. And she's basically the Virgin Mary of this cult. Um, yeah, which I'm gonna get into. Okay, But that's so, why her name is Mary. There's okay, a lot of- so, yeah. okay, the Virgin Mary of this cult. So yeah. it's some sort of demonic or powerful entity basically be like, pregnant. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is so, um, alarming. So there are two ways, um, to confront Miss Mary. Again, So her husband was just like, Mary, Mary, here. So, Could no, you no, not no. be part of the so, cult? No, 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 no. So, Mr. Barrows is born from a cultist family. He I'm actually, he actually tried to start family. a life. Give he actually, me my <clears throat> life. Give me my life. And this is important in Clock Tower 3. His grandfather actually founded the cult. And Mr. Barrows is like, you know what? This cult kind of sucks and I want to be a billionaire, so I'm going to go. <laughs> and I, they don't Only it were that easy. Well, they don't really go into how he became rich, but he basically tries to leave the family. And was he, he an old he white marries, man? Yeah, well, now he is, yeah. No. But in this day, he was, he's a young white dude who's like, you know what? This, well, you know, during the 1930s, who had probably a, a bunch he's of He's basically like, you know what? This cult's kind of evil, and what? I don't really want to be evil. What? So I'm gonna a go. cult is evil? I don't think I've ever... I don't ever think I've ever encountered in any sort of fictional or real-life scenario... A cool cult. Ooh. The cult of cool. Never found it. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, 
So Mary Barrows is a bitch, is basically it. Um, Wait, so whoa, 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 whoa. That's an awesome fucking wrestler tag. Mary Bitch Bellows. Barrows. Or Barrows. Bur technically it's Burrows. Mary Bitch Burrows. Uh, so yeah, so there are two ways to encounter her. Either um, you find her in a room. life decisions. If you find her in a room and you're like, oh my god, Mary, I'm so freaked out. There's a guy with scissors chasing me. And she's like, it's cool, drink some tea. And you're like, okay, where did you get tea from? And you drink it anyway like a fool and you pass. Like, you have no choice here. You drink it, you pass out, and you wake up in a cage with Mr. Barrows, who you find out has been being starved to death in a cage. Oh, I was talking about Mr. Barrows. Um, yeah, so Mr. Barrows is basically like, you know what, this cult thing, uh, I'm not into it, dad, I love you, granddad, I love you, but good luck, I'm out. And he married this woman, Mary, who's like, cults are cool, and he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm not really into it, and she's like, your family's part of a cult, and he's like, no, dude, dude, one <laughs> please <else>. don't, <laughs> one so, else. She basically gets really into the cult part of his family, and I guess he loves her so much, he's like, I oh. guess I can look past this. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Dude. Yeah, You got exactly. what you deserve. So, you in any get case, away from that. So, there are two ways you can find Mr. Barrows. Um, either by... Well, actually, I'm sorry, there's one way you can find Mr. Barrows, or you never find him for the whole game. And the one way is the way I mentioned. You find Mary, she drugs you, and puts you in the cage with him. You find out, uh, she basically became a part of this cult... And they were like, hey, my son sucks, can you do something about it? And she locked him up, and he's been starving to death in this cage in the house. And the whole orphan thing was a ruse. Um, yeah, it was a ruse. So he's not adopting any children. Oh, you're all, you're all about to be sacrifices, basically. Uh, so, so what exactly? I'm gonna get into that. So in any case, um, so the other way you find Mary is, um, if you find all the clues, or... Or even if you find Mr. Barrows. That's a fun thing. So Mr. Barrows, if you didn't find... There's a piece of ham in the kitchen. If you don't have that on you, he cannibalizes you because he's been starved that long. That seems extreme, but... <laughs> he's on. literally been in there for, like, ever. Like, she's not feeding him. Okay, the human body can last maybe three weeks without food, so I don't that's think what that's I'm, forever. Well, for, that's like forever for the human body, Gideon. Yeah. So basically, I mean, either, I, 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 I'll, so basically I'll, either, I'll, I'll concede that. So basically, either you get cannibalized, or you have this ham, and you give it to him, and Lot finds you and lets you out. And that's like Lot's only purpose, basically. Oh. That and sacrifice. Which, um, that's the only way Lot lives. Every other way she dies because you find her being sacrificed because you find out you're all sacrifices to the Scissor Man, who well, you I'm discover is the the baby. Yes. So, yeah. um, if you do everything right, you discover a room in the Barrows house with a skeleton and a journal. This skeleton was really good at writing. Apparently, is Jennifer's dad. Oh. Yeah. So, the you fuck? find- Yeah, so, exactly. So you I, I think I would go to Mary and be like, so, Bitch! My you, dad? You, that's you, why I'm an orphan? So, that's the shit I had to deal with? You're not wrong. So, you find this hidden room, um, if you do everything right. Like, like it is amazing how much you can miss all this was, stuff, because it's an Jennifer old school adventure game. Was Jennifer the ultimate high school detective? So, you find this room with this skeleton in this journal. And the journal mentions Jennifer by name, which is how you find out this is her dad. Your dad was a doctor. And in fact, uh, he was I'm being... sorry, Jennifer is a super common name. There's got a... It was a last name mentioned? Um... Yes. Oh, okay, because then it's... Yes. Again... But you don't Still pretty fucking common. You don't realize it's her last name until you read this journal, though. You're never told her last name until you read this journal, and she's like, Oh shit, this is my dad. <laughs> my dead dad. Uh, so my your dead last dad name is Simpson, by the way. Dying to a cult. My um, dead dad. Your your name is Jennifer Simpson. Although you were you were technically legally adopted, so now your name is Jennifer Barrows. But your 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 legal name Fuck before that. right now you were yeah. technically officially adopted, so you become Jennifer Barrows. But your technical name is Jennifer Simpson. So uh, no no your your real name is Jennifer. Fuck this shit. So you find this journal, and her dad died brutally. <laughs> Brutally. So, he was apparently, like, a basically a midwife. Um, and he was called to this house to help this woman deliver twins. Mm -hmm. And her name was Mary. Mm -hmm. 
So she gave birth to twins, and upon being birthed... Did they come out with the scissors? No, but they are demons, and they ate his hand. Oh. Upon being birthed, the first thing one of them did was eat his hand. That's when you drop the baby. <laughs> he tried! So he was like, holy shit, they're demon babies, I need to go. And Mary was like, no, 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 I'm locking you in this room, and you're gonna suffocate to death. And then he was like, I gotta hand it to you, Mary. This was well, well thought out. You really got me. So. You're gonna, you're gonna go out there 15 years from now and fuck with my daughter's life too, Mary? Because, man, that planning, thank what, you. What really bothers me is no mother is ever mentioned, ever. You just find out she became an orphan well, after this. Well, no, she's the Virgin Mary. And no, then, no, no, you know, no, Jennifer's no, mom. No, no, I, oh, I know, but then Jennifer's mother must actually be, or her father is the Virgin Gary? <laughs> So basically, that's that's more impressive. I'm gonna so, be honest, a virgin male birth. So he writes this journal because he's like, I don't know the fuck I just witnessed. I just uh, birthed I call demon bullshit. babies. I call bullshit. He wrote with his. It better been his non-dominant hand. It doesn't specify. I mean, guess he was ambidextrous. Can, here's the thing: you can still write with your bad hand. It would just look like shit. Yeah. Maybe Jen's really good at reading shitty handwriting. Oh, you so don't you don't know. see the handwriting? You don't know. Oh, it's it's te it's an old SNES game. They just write in text, but they're you know it's like. Hey, Jen, um, I love you. <laughs> if somehow this could make it to you, I'm die. I'm- I'm suffocating to death no, in this room. No, I love my wife, too. Well, that's the thing. I assume Jen's mom died at, maybe at some point before this, because he doesn't mention her at all. He just mentions how he's so scared about what happens to his daughter. He actually sounds like a really great dad. Uh, but he's like, uh, I birthed these sorry, demons, babies. Sorry, I never got to take you down They your, ate my your... hand. I'm really scared for my daughter. If anyone finds this, please make sure she's okay and stop the demon babies. You know, sign- I I've... just wish that could have circulated in the era of the internet. Like, you just went out on Twitter and was like, Just delivered demon babies, lol. They ate my hand. They Hashtag ate my hand. F my life. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm legit dying here, fam. Can someone just make sure my daughter Jen is okay? XOXO. Oh, man. And it's so sad because they actually have an illustration of Jennifer holding the skeleton like, Shit, this is my dad. <laughs> no, shit, that was your dad. So she's like, It's like, not your yeah. dad anymore, it's your dad's skeleton. And he mentions, you know, find them under the cradle under the stars. Yeah. Which is an important room in the game, and there's a puzzle there. So there's a secret underground network that leads to this clock tower. We're basically at the end of the game at this point. I've, I've discussed most of the important details, but... So you get there, and you, if you did it right, you learn from the journal they're twins, right? So, their names are Danny and Bobby, which you also learn from the journal. Which, by the way, are shitty names, but... Yeah, you know... <clears throat> I Sorry really, to all the Danny I really look Bobs. at demon children, and I don't think Danny and Bobby. I know, I know. Those are, like, the two least demonic names. So... You know what I, I would do? Xavier mm -hmm. would be a good demon name. Mm. Xavier. And, um... Reginald, maybe? Wow, you went really fancy on those yeah, well, two names. Well, it's, it's fancy rich people and, um, and possibly British. So, hmm. so, in any case, um, Bobby is the Scissor Man. So you know, of the twins, Bobby is the Scissor Man. Um, well, what, what is... What is I forget Dan? how you kill him, actually. But you do end up killing him. Bobby dies. I forget how. Um, but as you go into the cradle under the stars... You find a giant blobbish mutant Danny, who's a giant blobby baby. Oh, Danny <laughs> He's a giant boy. blobby demon baby. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, there's gas canisters and you blow him up. With what? The gas canisters. Yeah. He walks into them like a giant blobby baby would and blows up. Okay, is I'm he made kidding. of some sort of accelerant? <laughs> no, he just- he's made of demon, so he just walks in- oh! This is also where, if you didn't encounter Lot earlier, you find her and she dies to a sacrifice. You find out Mary was recruiting you to sacrifice you to her demon babies. <laughs> Basically. Her demon babies need blood. That's why they ate your dad's hand and shit. So, that's why she recruited four orphans. Was sorry, that always <laughs> bothered me in these things. Like, you're gonna be sacrificed. No, that's- you're not sacrificing anything to a higher calling. You're literally just feeding them. Basically, yeah. Okay? Uh, you know what? The fucking chicken that I had for lunch today was not a sacrifice. 
I just fucking ate it. Okay? So, basically, so, he blows up, um, Mary gets pissed at you and comes at you with a knife. Well, you did kill her demon, baby. She comes at you with a knife and... Through certain memes, you force her off the clock tower and she I drops you said, to her death. through certain memes? <laughs> and I, I just have this image of see you this, being... This th see that this is fine, dog? Because this is really you relevant right now. see the meme right of the girl looking at her boyfriend looking at the other girl? Do you see? <laughs> no, yeah, no, oh, actually, me. no, I totally get that. Right? The, okay, so the the one girl would be Mr. Barrows, right? <laughs> Who's like, come on, sweetie, and the guy would be Mary, and they would be looking at... The Satan? cult? cult? The cult? Thing? Yeah. I feel bad, because I think the cult is a name, but I forget it. They worship this guy. You don't learn to Clock Tower 3. Uh, they worship... Well, now, now I'm gonna check. Hold on. Name of cult in Clock Tower. They worship, uh... Like the great father or something ridiculous. Um okay, wait, I'm on the clock tower wiki, hold on. Okay, yeah. Uh ah! I it doesn't really I don't think they actually have a cult name, to be honest, but I know they worship like the the, the something father. <laughs> I don't it's even It's always know. the something father. Yeah, they're they're a cult though. Their true cult, um, but yeah. So Clock Tower One, the true ending ends with Jennifer alone looking off this clock tower because everyone's dead. <laughs> She's probably like, "How the fuck am I gonna get home?" <laughs> Basically, uh, there are alternate endings where everyone, can, where others can survive. Or there's actually one ending. You find a car in the garage and you can actually drive off in it and leave everyone. I would have done that. Um, <laughs> full disclosure. Behind. I think. I think you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bless sorry. You. Uh, that's a really good idea. Like, why didn't I would have done that? See, you can find a car and drive off in it. Um, although I think Scissorman's in the back and kills you though, because you know oh, horror game. Yeah. But I'm just saying it was there, and you could have driven off. But you know, and that 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 speaks to me because you know, like a 15 year old girl in that situation wouldn't yeah. have thought check the back seat. All right, so that's that's Clock Tower: The First Fear. And that's just the first game. That's okay. the first game. And wow. it's it's so good because it was about a serial killer that evolved into a twist, and I really enjoyed it. And, oh my god. I mean, well, yes, technically he is a serial killer. Three, well, Three deaths in a spree. Well, he is. He's killed people before, and I'm going to go into it because uh -oh. now we get to Clock Tower 2, or in the U.S. it's just Clock Tower because bullshit. It's technically Clock Tower 2, though, so I'm calling it that. I hate it. When I shouldn't. They do I should just say Clock Tower because we're in America. I fucking hate that. I know. Shit. I know. I, I mean, it. we've evolved past that era, at least. It so much. Um, no, we've evolved past it, but we still have it in the, you know, like, chronicles of human stupidity. So, alright, so I'll talk in. I'll. Since we're American, I will talk in America. So now we're up to Clock you Tower. You want to talk in America? Yes. So, how so we, are we went doing from this Clock podcast? Tower, the first fear. And now we're up to Clock Tower. Yeah. It's been a year since the first game. Are you still Jen? Yes. Now, Poor here's girl. the thing. So, by this point, Resident Evil 1 had come out in America. Capcom was like, shit, um, we got better Resident shit. Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 greatly influenced Clock Tower in the worst ways. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. So, in Clock Tower 1, you can play as two characters, but they are not clear on that. When you start Clock Tower 1, you start as Jennifer in a therapy session by Professor Dickbag. I wrote his name, Professor Barton, who I wrote as the douche studying Jennifer. <laughs> because he's a giant douche. So technically, you start the game playing as Professor Barton. And he's like, Jen, talk to me about the murders, Jen. And Jen's like, I don't know, Mr. Barton. Jen! Jen. Talk to me about the murders. I don't care how I don't care how traumatized you are. I don't oh, care. Doctor, talk to me. I am really traumatized, <laughs> and I would rather not. But I do talk about anything else. Jen, I look Jen, listen to me. Day. I'm a professor, and I have a PhD, and this is what's important to me. I don't give a shit about your feelings, Jen. <laughs> basically, it's basically well, the opening okay, of this game. Okay, doctor. You know what? I'm <laughs> I'm actually sure that the state is paying you. To give a shit about my case? So in Clock Tower 1, 
In Clock Tower 1, you technically play as Helen first. And in fact, the only way to actually play as Jennifer is in the opening of the game when you are Professor Barton and you speak to one of your co-workers, to one of your co-workers of all, like a random co-worker, and he's talking about the case. You speak to him the first time and he mentions Helen. You speak to him the second time and he mentions Jennifer. So if you only talk to him once, you have to play as Helen. You have to talk to him a second time to play as Jennifer. That's a stupid It's so game. stupid. So, there are you, two... You remember, I, I, I remember yeah. with Resident Evil 2, I knew someone who didn't realize you could play as Claire. Yeah. And so, because, they just never put Because you play as the... Leon first, yeah, no matter they, what. No, 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 they never put in yep. the second disc. Yep. And, and I thing. was like, how did you do that? And Clock Tower was one disc. That's it. Clock Tower is one disc yeah. with two gameplays because Clock Tower 1 is a mess. Here's the thing, Clock Tower 1 is not the worst game in the series, but it is a mess because they were trying to mimic Resident Evil because you had two different forms of play. And it really fucked with the story. I don't know, Helen sucks, I'm sorry. Helen sucks. Um, she's cool in theory. I wrote, she, so she is an assistant teacher to Professor Barton. So she's actually in college. She's a college teacher tutoring under Professor Dick Bag Barton. No, no, wait, wait, so I'm gonna give you a link really quick. Don't, oh my god, I saved the link because... She this blonde person? Yes, that's Helen. Wow, Helen does look like a bitch. No, Helen's fine. Helen's not a bitch, but she's just bland. There's just nothing special about Helen. Oh, well, um, granted, she still kind of looks like a bitch. She looks I'm like gonna, the person I'm... who would ask to speak with your manager. Basically. And I think Helen's fine. She's actually the only person who gives a shit about Jennifer. Don't click this link yet. I'm sending you a link. I'm gonna get to it in a sec. Um, so, um, there, there's a handful of characters. There's actually, like, 12 characters in this game, but none of them matter. Well, that's how you do a great plot. None of them matter. The only people who matter are Jen, Helen, Professor Barton, uh, Gots. Okay, half of them matter. But barely. <laughs> That's you know what though, you, so, you did it, Bat. You you made half of them matter and exactly barely. So in any case, so the game seconds. starts with Jen. She's being overly analyzed by Professor Barton, who's a giant dick. Actually, okay, I should, why are they being? I'm gonna like this so Deacon can see it too, because this is fucking funny when I, when we get to this. So no, no, but why? Why what? Why is she being analyzed? Is she okay? Yeah, just, you're right. How did so, she get to from point A you, to point so, B? So Jennifer was rescued from the clock tower by who? Who knew? By she the was police. The... She she ends up calling the police or running away or going in the car to the police. She gets out of there and uh, contacts the police. And she is so traumatized she has amnesia. So the reason she's being prodded by a psychiatrist is because they're trying to hypnotize her into remembering what was happened. Was the mansion like blown because up? no, it wasn't. But, there have been a series of murders in the area by a man with scissors. Okay, well, the so, police are gonna have fun naming him Scissor Guy. They call him Scissor Man. In fact, when you play the PS1 game, right, um, I... it actually opens with a old-timey narrator. No, 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 but no, do they have Jazz? Because that's no. the way you get rid of the no, Axe no, Man, then... <laughs> so maybe, maybe Jazz could help you against the Scissor Man. So they have an old-timey narrator who's like, who's like, can they save the town from the terrorization of the Scissor Man? The detectives are on the case. I'm not kidding. There's a whole opening about it where they're like, okay, the so Scissor Man is I, bringing I, I terror. I am deeply, deeply ashamed at the police's incompetence there. If they picked her up at that house, all they had to do was go in the house and be like, hey, is anybody. Oh. Basically. Oh. Basically. Oh my. Basically. Oh my god. Basically. Stevens! Stevens, Basically. get over here! What is this fucking thing with the scissors? Um, so another fun fact is, uh, Jennifer, who has amnesia at this point, she barely remembers what happened because of PTSD. And actually, they try That's to go- realistic. They try to go over PTSD in this no, game, No, no, I'm not even being- I, I no, understand no, no, there's a, a lot of sarcasm for here. For a PS1 game, they don't do it great. But no, they try. But, like, they try. legit, um, like, if yeah. I saw Satan's demon babies and everything like yeah. that, I think I would be like- Yeah. So- what was I doing? So, um, so in any case, the main characters you need to know yeah. are the four play- the two pl the four play- I'm gonna go four. There's four playable characters, right? If you play as Jennifer, you play as Jennifer and a man named North. 
I'm gonna go into North. Uh, Capcom. I'm gonna go into North because so... she grosses me the fuck out. I'm gonna go into North. And then there's oh, if you play uh, as Helen, how how is you're gonna it... find out why. You're gonna find it's so gross. And then if you play as Helen, you also play as a man named Gotts, who is the lead detective on the Scissor Man case. So those are the four play playable characters, basically. So I'm gonna go over Helen first because her storyline's the worst and the shortest. So if you're playing as Helen, if you don't talk to this random coworker a second time, you play as Helen. Helen is currently housing Jennifer, who has no home right now. So Helen is like, I, I will take her in uh, because I don't want to see her on the streets and you want to, you know, look at- I know, you know I know, like, I know. There are no other orphanages are... in the country? I guess not, no. I guess it was just that one run by that cult bitch. <laughs> um, Man, so, no wonder well, no, that's not she true, was- Because actually a representative of that orphanage comes forward and you find a new character named Edward, who is like, oh, I was also there with Jennifer. And Jen's like, I have amnesia, so I don't, I don't remember you, but I, I guess you might have been there. And Edward's like, yeah, I survived the scissor man. And Jen's like, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> you really shouldn't have been enthusiastic about it if you really did survive the scissor man, Edward. Sick Basically. Fuck. So, did, wait, no, no, so, yeah. did, did, was Edward really in We're gonna get into that, we're gonna get into that. Okay, so, god. If you played the SNES game, though, you look at Edward and you're like, Fuck you. Fuck you, you weren't in the first game. Either Capcom's adding you for reasons, or you're no, a fucking but, okay, demon. So, I'm My gonna, first inclination go, was no, Edward's a I'm fucking gonna, demon. I'm gonna go in yeah. to a little, little segue here. Capcom is fucking horrible yeah. with continuity and canon. They're yeah. just like... Throw it in there. Basically. Every fucking time. Basically. It fucks up timelines. I know. And everybody's like, I don't know how this works. And Capcom's like, it just Neither works. Neither do we. <laughs> so in any case, so we're playing as Helen first. Helen is technically the first person in the timeline who finds the Scissor Man. So Helen takes Jennifer God, I home. I really have Helen... like a 1930s like, so just Helen... jazz vibe from Helen... this guy. Helen takes Jennifer home from the session. In her time, that's another thing. In each timeline, the events happen differently. It's bullshit. So in Helen's timeline, she takes Jen home and then goes back to her college because she's a fucking college student, by the way. Helen's a college student under- What economy is this shit? What economy? So Helen- I know. No, Helen, no, no, no. The 90s. No, it's no, no. I think I want to live in this world. So Even Helen, with the cults and shit, if that's a thing. So Helen takes Jen home and she's like, okay, I'm going to go back to my university. I need to talk to some coworkers and I, I want to nap for whatever reason. She goes back to the college to, re to report her time with Barton and then she takes a nap. That now you can I'm click this link. That. You can click the link now. I want you to look at this. So Helen wakes up and it's like the middle of the night and she's like, oh shit, I need to get home. And, and she goes to leave. And the fucking scissor man attacks her. And I want you to look at how janky he looks when he attacks her. I thought this was him for a second, man. No, that's that's the idiot. Is he knocking? He's the idiot playing. I'm not getting into No, who. no, not him. Is the yeah. scissor man knocking? Yeah, the scissor man's knocking. No, that's not true. I'm sorry. The, his first murder victim is knocking. <laughs> Watch how janky he moves. It's so dumb. I hope I hope Deacon's watching this. By the way, this character, right? This poor character's name is Danny. All he did, the only crime he committed was fixing Helen's hard drive. <laughs> Look at him! That bum, is... bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay, I was not wrong with my jazz vibe. <laughs> so, so that's your first encounter with the Scissor Man is Helen. You can close it now, that's it. I, 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 I love how <laughs> at the <laughs> end... <laughs> I love it. Hoppa! Hubba, 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 hubba. hubba, and then he, she just ran around so, him, and then he's like, he literally stares at me like, like, shit, what do I do now? Bubba, bubba, <laughs> bubba. That is, so, oh my god. I want to point out, poor da all Danny does is fix Helen. He stays late fixing Helen's hard drive, and he gets murdered by the Scissor Man. By the way, that's it. That's Danny's entire character development. <laughs> you have a whole introduction with him. And his life story, and then he just... I guess I'll die now. I guess I'll die now, basically. So, um, anyway. You, you can totally so, get that from Danny. As character. Helen, you have to... The first scenario is you're escaping the university. Yeah. You find several murdered people. You call the cops. You literally call the cops. You make it to a phone, and the phone is working. 
and you're literally like, help, Scissor Man is here murdering people, and they're like, ha ha, funny prank hand, and you're like, no, my name is Helen, he's literally here murdering people, please help, and they're like, call back when there's a real emergency, please, and you're like, <laughs> that's sadly kind of believable. So you can call again. Like, is this like a major city or a small town? Uh, it looks like a major city. You actually see a city map. That's fucking dumb. So you can call again, and you're like, no, really, please help me. And they're like, fine, we'll send a dude. And you can find that dude murdered. Didn't they have a fucking gun? <laughs> I just watched the Scissor <laughs> Man. He's pretty fucking slow. Well, if this is is this taking place well, in America? Thing. Because those cops you're, are trigger happy. You're led happy. to believe bullets do not affect the Scissor Man. What kind of bullshit is that? He's a fucking demon, Gideon. I mean, just he what? He ate a dude's hand when he was birthed. I thought he was dead. He's not. Spoiler alert. Oh, it's the same guy. <laughs> Maybe. You. I can't say. Continue. Okay, so she's so, running from the scissor man. Helen hides in a bunch of crates, even though <laughs> he's... It's only been a year, but you're led to believe he's, like, smarter than the first game, but he's really not. Is he? Yeah, he's not. D is he? You hide in a bunch of crates, and you finally leave. Um, oh, I guess there's only one hiding spot in this room. And in I Jennifer's playthrough at this time... Oh, God. North's... Uh, so, okay. Jennifer's 15, right? Mm. North is 35. The game ends with them dating. Is he trying to run for no. a government official Jen... in the Deep South? <laughs> Jen, now to be fair, Jen is hitting on him like nobody's... That, to be fair, Japan, like... Japan, no. I know, yeah. No, She's all like, Japan. please date me, please date me. North, you're so cute, please date me. I know, I don't know what the fuck they did, but North is like, yeah, I guess, sure. Basically, yeah, they basically... The game ends with them dating, basically. It's gross as fuck, I know. I know, she's 15. And North is like, well, she wants to date me, so... Oh, my God. Um, so North is... No! North is a photographer for the newspaper. Oh! And that's how they meet. Oh, and he's yeah. a photographer! He's a photographer, yeah. Oh! God! Almighty! Um, and the police are incompetent! Does no one know what a search warrant is? I literally... Is? So I literally wrote in my notes... No one has a problem with it either? No! What no one cares. Helen is kind of like, uh, maybe be careful. He might be dating you for publicity. But that's all she cares about. What? I know. And, and literally, in my, notes, in my notes, I literally wrote, North is like 35. He's macking on Jennifer, who's 15. I think, I think he's Barton's coworker, which I found out I was wrong. He's a photographer. It's, it's hard to follow, but it's like, oh, wait. Oh, I actually wrote, oh, wait, no, he's a photographer. Skeevy as fuck is what I wrote. In my notes. Oh, that's actually the name of his <laughs> photography studio. Skeevy as fuck photos. <laughs> Do you have an underage relative that you want photographed? Um, I'm the man for it. Nor. So, there's, the there's a bunch of people oh you my, meet in this game. Oh my god. I'm sorry, no. And most of them don't matter. I'm just gonna write that. Most of the people you meet don't matter, but North is skeevy. Um, well, from the writing, I totally <laughs> gathered that is an so, accurate statement. So in any case, um, if you're playing as Jen, oh for some reason in Jen's story, instead of Helen taking her home, she walks home alone on her side of the game. And on oh, her way fuck. home, I don't know, yeah. On her way home, she's basically like, hey, North, wanna go on a date? And he's like, yeah, okay. And she's like, cool, I'll meet you after I walk home. And he's like, yeah, okay. She walks home alone, and her side of the story. <laughs> um, and she encounters Scissor Man walking home. Scissor Man murders an, a cop on the street when she's like, hey, can you help me? And he's like, sure. And then Scissor Man comes up and stabs him. I bet Scissor Man is like, Jennifer, <laughs> I'm just trying to protect you from, from poor me. life choices. You're 15, you shouldn't be dating a 35-year-old. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, come here. Come here and give me um, a little snip-snip. So, so yeah, so she finally makes it home if you play as Jen. I mean, um, is she a fast runner? Yeah. She, what did I write? Then run from north, you dumb girl. Running. What are you doing? Yeah. So, in any case, um... <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't get over that. That is I know, that is it's fun. gross. It's so gross. That is so, so fucked. It'd be different if she were like 25 and he was 20 and so 35. The next scene that the don't game, matter. So the next scene in the game changes depending on who you play as. If you're playing as Jennifer, 
North plays the scene. Wait, it's been a year? <laughs> it's been a year, yeah. So she's 16. She's se- you're right, she's 16. But that's not that's better. That's not better. So, <laughs> I, was, I was grasping. Well, I, no, no, you could see the calculations think, going in my head. Please, how do we make this fucking not gross? I think in the first game she's 14, actually. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure worked. she's 15 in this game. So, uh, the next scene, it depends on who you're playing as. If you're playing as Jennifer, you're North. If you're playing as Helen, you're um, Gots. <clears throat> Gots is a badass, so Gots is a detective, and he's like... He always gets his He's basically man. like, fuck serial killers, why am I doing this? Helen, why are you doing this to me? Helen, can you just stop trying to do my job? Helen, you're gonna die. I know how to use a gun, you don't. Helen, no. Helen, stop doing the thing. So Gots is actually really smart and probably the best character in the game. <laughs> North, I don't give a shit about, but... Basically, the next part of the game is about a man who is randomly made up, who is supposedly a butler for the Barrows at one time. He's not from the first game, but at one point before the events of the first game, he was a butler in the Barrows' house. You find out. He's a Barrow butler. So the gods, gods gets a lead on this. And if you're playing as Jennifer with North, they never really explain why North goes there. It makes more sense if you're playing as Helen for Gots to go there, because he's a fucking detective. Whereas North is like, uh, I Jen- just know the way. The he's way. Like, he's like, I want to help Jen because she's hot. So I guess I'll like go here. <laughs> I don't know. So and then and then Chris Hansen is at the door and he's like, take a seat. So the same events happen no matter who you're playing as. That's why I don't care who you're playing as. But basically, yeah, you go no. there and the old man is like, yeah, they were weird. They had demon bait. Well, okay, to be fair, he's like, they had kids, but the kids were weird, so I left. Which, like, kind of sets up a timeline. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. How <laughs> visible were the demonic appearances? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Were they red? Well, if you look at Dan, right? Dan was a blobbish monster. Bobby, just his face was sunken like he had a stroke. <clears throat> Are you Googling it? Bobby. Bobby Barrows. Barrows. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not sunken. He's still a Frankenstein like face. No, <clears throat> no, he looks like the fucking guy from Iron Maiden. Okay. Iron no, no. Okay. Um, okay. No, 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 no. Hold on. Oh, mascot. Um, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Iron. So and, yeah. <clears throat> hold, hold on. Hold on. So, are you still talking about it? Look. See. Yeah. Okay. So in any case, so you're talking to the butler, and he's like, "Yeah, the bearers were weird." And this is what he brings up, which is new, and he's like, they had this statue they worshipped, um, and they had this, like, castle in England. You know what's sad? <laughs> yeah. The graphics They're of, so good. That's the first, the first game. The first clock tower it's so good. are way better than the second one. I know. So... Even for his weird... I know. Well, business. he was like, he's a, he's a kid. So in any case, so, you go to talk to this butler, and he's like, yeah, I left because it got weird, um... Barry got weird. The whole house oh, got weird. Oh, wow. I just Googled Dan Barrows. Yeah. I told you he was a blobbish baby How monster. do you not... I know. How do no, you not... No, you're spoiler. Get not, off that. Get not, off that. I'm not spoiling that's, shit. That's spoiler territory. Get off yeah, that. I'm not... So, in any case, so... Thought there so, were more in-depth The butler is like, yeah, they were weird. Uh, I left because it got really weird. You know, they locked Mr. Barrows in a... Ca- he doesn't really say it outright, but he's like, Mr. Barrows went missing... So I left because it got weird. He <laughs> basically. Well, yeah. it got weird because they weren't going to pay me anything. They kept paying me in these weird teeth. And um, I was just, I was really weirded out. I, they were clearly human teeth and I didn't have a, a, so a reason to not say no. This is basically where the game gets weird. Like, this is where you this first. This is the place. This is the place, yeah. This is the spot. So even though you hear, oh, the babies were demons, like, apart from Danny being a blobbish monster, there's not really any other evidence. So. The power goes out in the house, and the butler, I don't even remember his name, that's how much it doesn't matter, but I don't even remember his name, but basically he's like, he's like, huh, I wonder why the power went out, and whoever you're playing is, is like, uh, and I then he's like, I someone had a pair of giant he's like, shears and maybe we should investigate, so you go investigate as the character, and then when you come back, uh-huh. the chandelier falls on him and kills him. And who is that? The butler. The butler dies. They the chandelier falls on him and kills Call him. Call the fucking police at this point. 
Well, I, you I, are I, the police. You're a detective. No, depending no, on the story no. Month, like a year or two ago, being like, I know. Mr. Barrows just went well, fucking missing. Well, he fled from like England or wherever. I forget what. But you find out. So the reason you go to investigate this butler as Gotts. I don't know why you do it as North. It makes no sense. But as Goths, the reason you do is because you f you find out they they immigrated from London. Oh, like they're okay. British. So he goes to investigate this butler, uh -huh. who you find out immigrated with them, because he knows where they originally lived in England before they moved to to America or wherever the game takes place. I forget where the game takes place, but so when you investigate his house, you find a map to the original Barrows Mansion in England, but you find it. By finding a haunted African mask, it floats in circles at you, and you have to, like, shoot it. Or if you're playing as North, you have to throw a bottle at it. <laughs> on the table. But you basically destroy okay, it, okay, and in it so, was the map to where the barrel so, is. <laughs> so, you know, Gots is just like, ba bam, ba bam, Gots ba is like, I have a gun, fuck you, basically. And, and the mask doesn't do anything else? It tells you where the mansion was in England, which they didn't know. Wait, wait, wait. So, it, it helped them? Yeah. So the they're in America. I guess. No, guns. no. Let me let me break it down to you. They're in America. A fucking floating mask mm. gives you help and advice, and the cop's first instinct is to <laughs> fucking shoot it instead of being like, "What else do you know?" And we're also pointing out we're in America because the the dumbass weird. Let, let's just be frank, he's a pedophile at this point. He's basically a yeah, pedophile. Yeah, <laughs> goes, and it's like, oh, my first instinct is to throw, throw a fucking a bottle. bottle at it. I, I'm sorry, if I saw a fucking um, flying mask that was like, here's the way to get all the answers you're looking for, and then literally spoke to me, and there was no fucking... I, and I was not being chased by a scissor guy, I think I'd be like, whoa, whoa, can you come with me? I gotta show people you. So, this um, is crazy. We could we could make a lot of money. So in any case, um, so no, I the, just and, and so the I just really wanted point. to know if it actually said anything or if it was like in that game Scratches where it just kind of like hovers at you menacingly. It does. It hovers at you menacingly. Wait, it was menacing like, though. Like dark, evil music plays. So, like, and here's where it gets... It gives you the feeling something bad's about to happen. Oh, to be okay. fair, nothing bad happens, but it gives you the feeling something bad is about... Like, it's bad, bad magic or whatever. But, yeah. in any case, um... Did I mention the power went out? Before the chandelier fell on the butler, the power went out. That's what started this. The butler was like, I should investigate where the power went out. And then the chandelier falls on him. Um, yeah, so... North is creepy, although I just realized... His name's actually Nolan? No, his name North. is Pedophile, but, you know. <laughs> I keep calling him North, and uh, Deacon brought up best. It's probably because his name is Nolan North. Like, you know, the actor's name is North. Not oh, for this character. Oh, don't Nolan no, no, no. North for we me. We know the actor Nolan North. I think that's why I keep calling him North. I, like, yeah, Deacon's that's totally, totally why you're doing it, but Nolan. don't fucking I know not, I ruin that treasure. No, you're right, right. So don't case, ruin Nathan Drake. The funniest and most... If you're an animal lover, you're gonna hate this part, but, so, the mm. butler, so, so the whole significance of you being in the butler's house is that you find the map to the Barrows or Boros England mansion, mm -hmm. also named the Clock Tower. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, so in any case, um, to escape, uh, wait, yeah, so to escape... The house where the butler lived, right? He has a dog. And even the dog watches his owner from outside. The dog's on the outside of the house watching in through the glass door. He watches his owner get murdered by a chandelier, oh, right? Oh, wow. So, like, <laughs> the dog is probably, like, listening to the sounds of silence and putting that paw against the so, window So, oh, I also forgot to mention, Scissor Man is in the house. If you go to the wrong room, you find Scissor Man is in the house, and he probably is the reason the chandelier fell on the butler. It's what they allude to. They don't technically say it. Like, he just filed his scissors up on the, the, the lining. <laughs> yeah, basically. He clearly, he couldn't be in another room and then hanging out at, like, stick spider Manning it well, on the, the ceiling. The puzzle to get out of the house is you go into the bathroom and you find powdered soap, which apparently is a thing, and you throw- and to get out of the house, you throw it in the dog, you know, like pocket sand, and you run. 
You throw it at the dog. You throw it at the dog who just watched his owner get murdered. Because otherwise, the dog tears you from limb from limb. What kind of dog is it? It's like a St. Bernard. Oh. Yeah, it's a giant it like ass a fucking dog. No, it's a giant ass fucking dog. So you basically. You pocket sand the dog to leave. <laughs> you know, when you're like, oh, those who hate animal cruelty. You're gonna hate I mean, that. <laughs> I'll be real, like, that's awful, but, like, honestly, I thought the Scissor Man was gonna disembowel the dog or something. No, Scissor Man's apparently pro dog. He doesn't do anything to the dog, he just right? murders he, you, yeah. So, and then the, the dog comes up to him, licks his face, so, and he's like, you're the only one who ever loved me, dog. So Nolan and Ergots makes it back, right? And they're like, okay. The Burroughs, or Barrows, because the name's the same, but it's in England. So FYI, to... at this point, I keep calling him a pedophile. I googled a picture of his concept he art. He looks like a pedophile. He looks like a fucking pedophile. But he's basically, Gotts and or Nolan is like, we gotta go to England and find the origin of the Scissor Man to stop him from murdering people. I don't know why, but they all agree to this. So Helen and or Jennifer goes to all their friends... And is like, we're going to England. And their friends are like, vacay! <laughs> so, like, ten people go to England with you. I'm not even kidding. What the fuck? There's, like, ten people in this game, and none are of them you, matter. Are you literally basically creating a human shield scenario? <laughs> like, ten people do you, do you go to you Do you go to American Airlines and be like, I, hi, I would like to pay for the cheapest tickets possible. And actually, Gotts even makes the comment, he's like, what is this, a fucking school field trip? Why are we taking all these people to England? He literally comments on it, like, why are we taking all these people to England? But basically, like, you take ten people to England, including some douchebag named, named Harris? I'm sorry. But including some douchebag a named Harris, name. who, I'm gonna get into it, but like, there's a ton of people who are mentioned in this game and never do anything special, but they all go with you to England and slowly get murdered in England. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I hope the trip to England. You go to England and Scissor Man's there. <laughs> now, does Scissor Man teleport or does Scissor Man. No, you're Man... gonna find out how that was possible. Well, tell me now. So, depending on who you play as, uh -huh. right? If you play as Helen, it turns out Barton was an agent of Scissor Man and was dressing up as him for all the murders. I'm sorry, who is Barton again? Oh, the he was the Professor Dickbag who was investigating Jennifer. Apparently he was so caught up in it, he dressed up as Scissor Man and got so psycho- even though he was a psychologist, he got alluded into being Scissor Man for Scissor Man to do his bidding. Or, if you play as Jennifer, this idiot named Harris, who you meet at one point in the game, who's like a schoolmate of yours, is an agent of Scissor Man and does his murders because Scissor Man promises that he will give Harris Jennifer as his girlfriend. Ew. <laughs> yeah. So either Barton or Harris are an also, agent of Scissor Man. Also, you dumb He's clearly lying. He's gonna know, kill Jennifer. I know. I'm aware. So the he's reason the reason Scissor Man is in England is he's been there the whole time. The person committing murders in America to find Jennifer was either Barton or Harris, depending on who you're playing as. Mm -hmm. It's dumb. Yeah, you don't say. But yeah, if you're Jennifer, you defeat Harris because he's dumb, basically. And if you're Helen, you. I find like that. I I defeat you. How? I do it! Oh shit, well, does that work? It's even worse because you go to England, right? And if you're playing as Helen, you find out- Who paid- oh, did everybody pay for themselves? I don't know, they don't go- I, I feel I bad asked for- I this question myself, like, who paid for this? But anyway- You see Gots being like, I'm sorry, am I paying for everyone here? <laughs> but if you go there, Helen is talking to Gots and she's like, where is everyone? And Gots is like, oh, they went in the mansion. And Helen's like, we have, like, done something about that? And Gots is like- I mean, you brought them here. <laughs> wow. That is cold-blooded. <laughs> but then Helen wow. is like, Helen is like, well, shit, I don't know where Jen went. And Gots is like, you brought her. You, you brought her. And Helen's like, wait, I don't know where Harris is. And Gots is like, brought What do you think I'm going to say <laughs> like, But yeah, so, if, now, it, this is where it drastically changed whether you're playing as Helen or Jen. It's been pretty different, but this is where the drastic change happens. So if you're Helen, you enter the mansion you with Gots. You realize that all of this was a bad idea? <laughs> you enter the mansion with Gots, 
And the first floor that you enter in, like, collapses on you. And there's a giant hole between you and the front door. So that's how, story-wise, they trap you in the mansion. Because it just crumbles Poor on you. Poor architecture. Yeah. Whereas if you're Jennifer, you wake up because Harris fucking drugged you and brought you into the mansion. And he's like, hi, Jennifer. I drugged you because Scissorman said you're mine now. And Jennifer's like, nah, bruh. And Harris is like, no, but Scissorman said. And Jen's like, nah, bruh. Yeah, no, that's not how consent <laughs> That's not works. how consensual relationships work. Relationships work. I am involved in a relationship with a 35-year-old man, because that's healthier. You know, they never go over how North gets into the mansion. Because when Helen goes in, it's just her and God's. I would really and, like to see how Nolan... I'm sorry, I keep North, saying North. The same as Nolan. I'd also like to see how Nolan got there. I keep fucking up, but Nolan just... Somehow goes inside. They never sweetie, really go over sweetie, it. Sweetie, yeah. sweetie, you can't fuck up harder than Capcom did with this story. <laughs> this is a train so, wreck. So yeah, if you're playing as Jen, you trick and What get... elements of Resident Evil did they fucking okay. copy? Basically the dual storyline. The stealing from Resident Evil becomes more apparent in Ghost Mask, which I'm gonna get into. All and right. this one they were loosely like, oh, Resident Evil 1 did two storylines. We should do that. And that's the no. It gets worse in Ghost No, because the storylines are basically the same, except one character is different. <laughs> I like Deacon. Remember when people said Kingdom Hearts is convoluted and weird? You know, Clock Tower is so weird. Fierce ferrets, remember? Oh boy, so why don't you remember, tell me about how the pedophile well, comes this to game the rescue? Is, this game in the correct chronological order is Clock Tower 2. In the correct chronological order, this is Clock Tower 2. In America, it's Clock Tower 1. It makes no sense. I'm gonna stress that. Um, anyway, so if you're Jen, you evade Harris until he until Scissorman kills him. Scissorman kills Harris because he's like, I don't, I just need you to bring Jen here Surprise. because my mom wanted to kill Jen for me, so I decided I wanted to kill Jen. That's basically his reasoning. Is that my mom wanted to kill her, so I, so she died because. Spoiler alert, Scissor Man is Dan, by the way. Remember Blobby Baby Dan? So in this game, Edward, remember Edward? Yeah. Who also comes along in this trip? That's Dan Barrows, aka Scissor Man. Oh. Yeah. So, so they... he's avenging his brother and his mother's deaths from the first game. But he's a normal looking kid now. I know, with... yeah. Who can transform, I know. I know, I'm aware. And you chose to transform into a little school child? I'm aware, yeah. He's you could have transformed into a lot of people. I'm aware. Clock Tower is much worse. Uh, but in any case... <laughs> than, than Kingdom Hearts. Anyway, so yeah, so... Harris dies, because he's an idiot. Yeah. Um, and Jen is pretty much skulking around. So this is again where the continuity makes no sense. Because you're playing as Helen. Helen ends up finding Jennifer on a cross about to be sacrificed. Whereas if you're Jen... Where the fuck did the Judeo-Christian crap come whereas from? Whereas if you're Helen... Uh, I'm sorry, whereas if you're Jen, you find Helen was trapped in a box. And you free her from this box. And she was like, how did I get in this box? Sister Man did this. <laughs> I turned and there I was in this box. And there I was in this box. <laughs> I was outfoxed and put in a box. And then Jen is like, Helen, is it really a time so, yeah, to rhyme? Um, the game ends with basically, you're going through this mansion. Alcohol? If, it ends with alcohol? If you're Helen, if you're Helen, it's way less anticlimactic. You know, it's Je you know, whereas Jen faces Harris, who was fake scissor man? Yeah. Helen finds Barton just bleeding in a room who was attacked by scissor man like, oh yeah, I was fake scissor man all along. Please forgive me. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> And I imagine Helen at this point is like, fuck that. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. You came into my room after I had a nap. And do you know how overworked I am with all of this shit? I'm a fucking college student, Barton. You're I had finals shit. and you were just all like, no, 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 no. I'm going to come creeping into your room with a giant pair of fucking um, shears. Oh. Okay. By the way, also for some reason, right? So no. you're, you're in the Barrows Mansion. No. Right? Where uh -huh. I guess they were a cult. Nope. There's a room you find as nope. either character where nope. a bunch of ghost children nope. are holding hands singing, like, the influenza song or whatever. What is, what is the... F 
you know, influenza, influenza. No, influenza. It was, no, no, no. Da, da, da. No, it was, no, that's um, Jacques, right? I opened the window and influenza. It's about a, a bird. Song. Yeah, I Google, it, I opened no, no, the window and influenza. Song. Yeah, there's a song. There's a bird. It's a rhyme. Oh my god. I opened the window Why? and influenza. God, that's I'm, so I'm fucking not joking. Th- Why? <laughs> Why were our ancestors fucking sociopaths? So, in any case, um... I don't know, no, I want to... Sh- everybody talks about, lol, we're gonna eat Tide Pods and, and snort condoms because we hate ourselves. Okay. You literally wrote fucking death songs. Yeah. There was and a little sang girl. Them to children. And she had a little bird. Oh, no, she this. called it Enza. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> read it, Gideon. You said you wanted to read it. Go read it. Go, go up and read it. There was a little girl. And she had a little bird. She called it by the pretty name of Enza. But one day it flew away, but it didn't go to stay. For when she raised the window, influenza. Oh shit, wait. Ah! Ow. Sorry, my alcohol didn't know. Yeah, me. apparently the Ring Around the Rosie song is about the Black Plague. Like, I yeah. never want to fucking hear so this shit from are... anybody. So if you go in a room Humans it's... are just depressing. So... Jen finds Nolan in this weird ghost room with these ghost kids singing a song, and then they vanish. And Nolan is like, did you see that shit? And Jen is like, nope. I think I did. And also, they're in a room full of children's bones, by the way. Nope. Nope. And they're like, so this mansion's fucked. And and Nolan is like, yeah, we should go. (laughs) And I think if you're Helen, you can find the same room, but no one's inside. And she's just like... Not I don't want to be here. <laughs> I miss my box. I miss my box. Um, but yeah, so, in any case, uh, Scissor Man chases you at some point, but this this chapter of the game ends with you going into a room, and Danny is like, you killed my brother and my mom. Oh, also, this is the game where you find all the statues that are like, it's the Virgin Mary, but it's not <laughs> Mary from, you know, it's not Mary, it's my Mary. Yeah. No, so no, no, Danny boy. It's my Mary. No, 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 no. I am the scissor boy. I No, I'm the scissor man, and it's my Mary. That's how this works. No, it's my Mary. No, it's my Mary times infinity, you bitch! <laughs> so anyway, um, the game ends. So this is where the Max... the I shouldn't say Maxwell, but this is where the cult statue gets introduced. So there's a little statue that's, like, apparently important to the cult... And you have to find it to get the correct ending on either character. But basically, you go into a room, and Danny is like, I was the... Or, I'm sorry, Edward is like, I was the scissor man all with his little size or praying mantis arms. Like, I was the scissor man all along. And Jen is like, oh, well, I was amnesiac, so that kind of makes sense. And Edward's like, fuck you, it's a twist. <laughs> you didn't All right, know. M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> So, uh, which anyone who played the SNES game knew Edward didn't exist then. Anyone who played the SNES game knew something was up with Edward, the little bitch, who was suddenly like, I want to go on a field trip to England. (laughs) I have no clear motive. Oh, I forgot to mention, so Edward is with that orphanage that Jenna's from. Uh Uh-huh. And she's, he's with a, he's with a representative. Uh Uh-huh. Hold on, what's her name? Fuck, hold on. Um... Ed, I'm so inebriated. Hold on, Edward. He's with a representative from the orphanage, right? Edward is the hidden main antagonist of Clockwork One. Clockwork One, whatever. Um, wait, but Kate K. Satterwhite. Um. Ew, that's even worse than I thought. Ew, what's with the pedophilia in these games? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Apparently his guardian has pedophilic feelings towards him. Which I didn't even know. Apparently the Uh... game developer revealed that. The pedophilia is strong in this game. I don't get it. No. Um... I remember when well, yeah. Backlam has in, been excited to tell endings, me about this for, like, two weeks. In one of the endings, she, like, protects him, is why I wanted to bring it up. No, but I just want to bring up that she wanted to tell me about this, because while it has a really strong premise, like, the idea behind this is interesting. It's really cool! Like, But uh, the execution, it's my so god! It's so, that's really cool, that this idea that this woman became a Virgin Mary for a cult and gave birth to demon babies... 
and it turns into a magical girl story with a horror genre? You don't see that. It's actually really cool, and I'm going to get into it more, but... Yeah. Ew on this woman. I didn't realize yeah. it went that ew, bad. Ew on pedophiles. I Shame brought it up you. because if you play the game in a specific way, she shows up and, like, protects Edward and, like, dies protecting him. So I wanted to bring it up. And then Edward is like, oh, yes, two birds with one I didn't stone. realize the pedophilic nature, but it's strongly hinted that this orphanage was really created by Mary as, like, a second coming for this cult. It's it's strongly hinted, that's why I bring it up, that this orphanage is a piece of shit, which is even worse now with the pedophilia. Did they go up and unbury <laughs> Mary's stupid bones and then throw them in a ditch? Well, I guess that's just, like, Apparently burying her all Apparently, in the again. novel, I didn't even realize it was a novel, actually. Yeah. Apparently in the not. novel, the woman who I just mentioned, who apparently has pedophilic feelings, is, like, possessed at one point, and that's where that spawns from. Apparently she legit tries to warn Helen, hey, I think Edward's trying to kill Jennifer. I didn't realize that. I'm just learning this now from the wiki. Apparently she does try to, like, not be a bitch, but yeah. I, I, I love that. Hey, one of your st one of the students is trying to kill her. Apparently in the novel she's decapitated by Dan, by Scissor Man. Which is, I need to read this novel. I didn't realize it was a novel, actually. I tried to do my best research before this, but it's junk fandom. I'm gonna get things wrong. Throwing that out there. Uh, Capcom got a lot wrong with this. <sighs> they did. They, they could have done so much more yeah, this you year. Yeah, This is a strong start to the Clock Tower what, what we need to do is take the Capcom logo and then run them through King's anyway, Landing nude, just screaming So the shame. weirdest part of Clock Tower 1 is the way it ends is that... Which the correct ending, because the wrong ending, it pretty much ends with Jen being murdered, unless you do it the right way. The correct ending is that Jen finds this statue, which is apparently the statue they all worship. It's like the big deal of this fucking cult is this statue. She finds it in, uh, in, well, technically, I'm sorry, Gott or Nolan finds it in that butler's house. He apparently stole it, which is why it was missing from the first game. But it's apparently this big fucking deal. And Jen, Jen somehow gets it from one of them. I forget what's it look how. Like? I don't know. All right. Well, well honestly, wait. I imagine that it's a statue of either Hideo Kojima or Norman Reedus. Something to look forward to, even if you're fucking up the execution all along the way. But please go on. Ah, uh, this is apparently what it looks like. Oh, I was right. It looks like Norman Reedus. Shut up. Uh, but um, no, in serious, it just looks stupid. Um, but yeah, so... I, here's, like, I shouldn't say it looks stupid. It looks like a, it looks like the something only reason a I'm, group of stupid people so would So the only reason I'm worship. bringing up the statue is because it becomes weirdly important in Ghost Mask, but also because it's how the game ends. You have to find the statue to activate the castle's, like, secret, like, fucking outer space ejection portal is the only way I can describe it. <laughs> Yeah, because why not? Um, you put the tower in, uh, the, the statue in this pedestal, and open the gate to, like, I don't know, another dimension or outer space. But basically, it creates a vacuum in which Edward gets, Edward, a.k.a. Scissorman, gets sucked out into wherever the fuck he gets sucked out into to die. Yeah. yeah. And Jen holds on to a railing, or Helen holds on to a railing to not die. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're holding on to railings yeah. against a fucking vortex I know, of private space. I know. No, no, no. In a shitty fucking structurally unsound I mansion, know. where at the beginning of their exploit into it, the it floor collapsed. caves in. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking believable. It, it, it's like you you go back in time and you you look at the constructors. And you're like, we didn't we put all of our yes, lumber Capcom lumbar the into the railing. We put so, all of the effort into the railing. So anyway, because Mike here is a fucking clairvoyant. Mike, tell us what you heard. Well, about two hundred <clears throat> years from now, a pair of little girls and their one and a detective and a pedophile are going to be dealing with a scissor guy. And uh, well, I'm going to tell you right so, now, I. I believe that this railing might save them somehow. So using the power of the statue that you find, which has never been brought up through any of the series, but using the power of this statue, the well, butler two gave games. you. You don't need to, like, that's Well, I know, just, yeah. I know. But what I'm just saying is the first game was like, oh, I gave birth to demon babies. And which, you know what I mean? by the way, if we're being honest, God, her uterus must have been fucked after that point. There's statues of her. That's what's crazy to me. Of her uterus? Or no, of her? of her. 
And in Clock Tower 1, the game I'm describing now, you can find a statue of the Virgin Mary, and you're like, that's Mary. Like, Orphan's Mary. And they basically revered her as the Virgin Mary of their cult. So Dan, uh, or Dad Barrows didn't have a demon dick, right? It's, that's the thing, it's alluded to the idea that she basically gave demon birth without sex. That's basically the idea that's poor, alluded Poor, poor Dad Barrows. No, he, he wanted nothing. He want like, he wanted it is out. heavily mentioned that he wanted the fuck out of this cult that his family started. His family started it in Clock Tower 3. It's, I'm gonna bring it up, but, like, his family started this cult, and... And Mr. Barrows, does he have a fucking first name? But he's basically like, yo, I want out of this cult, granddad. Yeah, okay, sorry. okay, so yeah, we, we, we've established um, how much he's wanted out of He wanted cult. out, and Mary was like, no, your cult family's cool. I want in. And he was like, I love you, but this is weird. And she's like, no, it's cool. <laughs> basically. So anyway, so using the power of the statue, you somehow eject Dan, Dan Barrows into space? Or some cult void. He dies, and you hang onto a railing, or whatever, and you live as Helen, or as Jen. And after this happens, the mansion collapses on you. Of course it does. Somehow Helen makes it but out. But the rails just stay I know, standing, I know. right? So Helen makes it out, and she calls the cops, and we go digging. And if you're playing as Jen, you're in there for like a day or two with Nolan, and Nolan's like. I think we're gonna die, Jen. And Jen's like, well, as long as I'm with you, baby. And they kiss. And it's apparently supposed to be so romantic. Nope. I know. Nope. I know. I'm aware. Nope. Nope. But, nope. so I'm Helen- gonna, I, I hope Helen and Gus Helen digs them out. took the fucking train to oh, Nopesville Okay, so Helen is, is against their reunion, but she's not against well, it. I wonder what? No! She's not against it for their age. She's against it because she's like, Jen- He's a photographer. He might be doing this to get story out of you. Please be careful. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason why she cares. I know. I'm aware. That's why I think it actually takes place in Japan. That's the reason why I'm like, does this take place in Japan? I don't know. So anyway, um, so yeah, so they, they dig out the mansion remains and find Jen and Nolan and they're safe and Dan is dead and it's a happy ending. Now, that's the tr I'm only talking about the true endings because going because even in this game there are ten endings as well. There's five endings for Jennifer if you play as Jen, yep. and there are five endings for Helen. Cool. I know. Yeah. So there's a shit ton, and that's why I like to call the Clock Tower series like the Until Dawn of its time, because they really did change. They did everything. They did except have quality. Well, apart from the pedophilia grossness, but they really did try to have like a lot of choice based endings, like they did. Yeah. I'm shitting on this. Okay, this so. Is, that's how, this is that's where how you the ruin whole, a franchise. This is where the whole title thing matters and why I bring it up. Okay. This is technically Clock Tower 2. Uh-huh. In the legit franchise, this is Clock Tower 2. We got it. In America, this is important. In America, this yep. is Clock Tower 1. I wrote it down. The next thing we're going to talk about is Clock Tower Ghost Mask. But in America, it was branded as Clock Tower 2. It has nothing to do with the Clock Tower franchise. I'm going to gloss over it in like 10 minutes. All right, so, let's do it. It's an off-branded series. You play the girl named Alyssa, right? Alyssa. Alyssa goes to visit her aunt and uncle. She goes to stay with them for a couple of days. Whoa, 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 whoa. Al Alyssa. Uh, no, Wait, no, 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 no. The no. character in Clock Tower 3 is... Three? Was her name yes. Alyssa? Yes. But That's why I remember people. that. I know. A lot of people were confused by this. They're two different people. No, I get that, but yeah. I remember that girl. Alyssa, I love Alyssa. you. I know. We're yeah. getting into that. So oh, anyway, okay. Alyssa goes to visit her grandparents, and she's like, "What? Um, why would you do that, Capcom? Why? So I know, I know. Why would you make two different know. characters well, with the same thing. fucking name? This game was an off franchise, and I'm confused because it, it literally has nothing to do with the rest of the, literally. All right. Literally, it has nothing to do with the franchise. Awesome. So I'm gonna gloss over it. Yeah. Alyssa is like, oh man, I'm going to visit my grandparents. I just got out of a mental institution. My parents don't love me, and I'm going to live with my grandparents. Yes, I know! Yes, that's how the game starts out! The game starts out with her grandparents being like, oh, Alyssa's coming to live with us. And the grandmother is like, 
we have to hide the curse from her. And the grandfather is like, I know, her parents don't want her because of it. I'm not kidding. This is how the game starts out. Wow. Okay. She just got out of a mental institution. All right, so. And she's going to live with her grandparents. Does she make it to her grandparents? She does. She okay. makes it fine. But before she arrives, her grandmother is like, oh, there's a knock at the door. It must be her. And she goes into the door and there's a scream. And the game cuts out. And then it's Alyssa arriving, like, hey, I'm here from the mental institution. Well, she's going to go right back <laughs> after what sounds like a bad time. Where are you guys? And there's body parts everywhere. Uh -huh. And there's blood everywhere. And uh -huh. she's like, oh, and this is the game where you could tell Capcom was like, oh, man, Resident Evil 2 is so successful. Let's turn Clock Tower into Resident Evil 2. Not because of the joint storyline. You play as one character. You play as Alyssa, but you find out Alyssa has a split personality. Yes, she has dissociative identity disorder. It's called Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within. Her split personality is referred to as Bates. Bates is a badass, by the way. Um, so Alyssa was bullied in school. Here's what happened and why she ended up in a mental institution. So Alyssa was bullied in school. And it turns out she had a split personality in Bates. And one day, the bullies went too far and they tried to kill her. And so Bates came out and murdered them. Okay. I'm, and I'm Bates, already in pro Bates. Bates literally sounds like a dude. Like, you can tell when it is Bates versus Alyssa. You can tell. All right, so, so Bates I'm, came I'm in, out, I'm in Bates's murdered right the now. shit out of these bullies. And so she went into a mental institution because of it. So years later, she comes out of the... This was back in middle school. Years later, she comes out of the mental okay. institution. And her parents are like, yo, we don't want her. <laughs> Basically, they're like, I'm, I'm out. And her grandma's like, her I'll parents, make some sugar yeah, cookies for her our sociopathic damaged granddaughter. Her grandparents, who are, are aware of something called the Maxwell curse, because her last name is Maxwell, are like, we will take her in. You know, the mental institution is like two blocks away from us. <laughs> we'll take her in. That's some prime real estate. <laughs> we'll take her in. We've That's got money. That's where you want to be, two miles away from us. We have a daughter she might connect with. She comes home. Wait, wait, wait. The grandparents have a daughter. Yeah, I know. It's weird. That I know. Okay, it's but not what really... about the other daughter? I know. Well, actually, that they, they have two daughters. the child. No, well, technically, okay, so they have three daughters. They have the one who spawned the child, basically. Actually, I think it might be the son, but it doesn't matter. But the point yeah. is that they have the one kid who spawned the girl, and they have two kids who are still young enough to be living with them. So, we're, is this like mid 2000s where they're millennials mm -hmm. and suffering through yeah. hard economic times? This is like the end of the 90s. So, <clears throat> so Alyssa comes home. She finds, um, the grandparents are, like, dying because they're, like, being murdered, basically. Um, the two daughters, one daughter is dead. She was brutally murdered. The other daughter, who's, like, 11, is, like, possessed and tries to kill you. And it's funny because, um, so Alyssa has a locket, right? You find a mechanic with a locket. The locket is blessed where it cancels baits out. The whole point of the locket is to hide Bates because Bates is a murderous, beautiful. Per I shouldn't say that, but Bates, Bates is seems legit. like the, per the perfect legit, solution but, to this problem that you're having. But they were like, "Oh, Bates murdered some kids in middle school, so we're gonna give you a locket that will prevent him yeah, from coming Bates out." Yeah, Bates murdered some <laughs> attempted murderers. I know, I know, I know. My bad. But anyway, so so Not condoning the game it, immediately like... points out, "Oh, here's a locket that prevents Bates from coming out." Because yeah. throughout the game. You need to find points where it lets Bates out to let Bates make certain decisions. Like, the game hinders on Resident Evil 2 logic where you want X character to make X decisions. So you switch between Bates and Alyssa in certain points of the game to get through the game. And they did a really poor job. They did a really shitty job. Anyway, yeah. so you find out the youngest daughter of your grandparents, um... Which is your aunt. Yeah. So you find the youngest daughter of the grandparents... Your aunt? ...is possessed. Are you older than your aunt? No. She's 11 and you're out okay, of Okay, you know school. how Aunt May looks like an old woman? Yeah. That's how your aunt looks. Okay. Basically how, how your aunt looks, basically. Um, but anyway, so... Then you're not so Her daughter is possessed be, okay. and killed her sister, and 
as Bates, you you kick her in the face. You literally find her and you're like, as Bates, Bates is the bomb. Bates is literally like, get the fuck out of here, shrimp, and kicks her in the face. Because <laughs> she comes at you with scissors. I wonder what that's hinting at. But she comes at you with scissors and you kick her in the face and you're like, get the fuck out of here, shrimp. Stop. But anyway, and your granddad is like, oh god, the Maxwell curse has come to, to like, claim all. And Bates is like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I love Bates, I'm sorry. Bates is amazing. Bates right. is some of the best gameplay in the whole game. Kicking your aunt in the face. <laughs> he No, literally this girl comes out with scissors and Bates is like, Bates is literally like... Like, Those no. of you who can't she's see like this, ten. he's drop kicking. She's like 10! And he literally goes like, kick. <laughs> no, you're like 10, get she out. She literally just kicked me. <laughs> he literally know. kicks her in the face! There's a cutscene! He kicks her in the face and she's like, oh god, my face! And he's like, get out of here, shrimp. And she's like, no! And she gets defeated. Alright, so is that how the game ends? No! Or? So you go through this whole scene, you find body parts, which are never described while you find them. But you find body parts everywhere, it's believed it might be the other sister. You find out the other sister was murdered by the littler sister, who was possessed to use scissors. Cough, cough. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, when you kick her and you find the grandmother and she's like, The Maxwell curse, no, my daughter. Anyway. So after you kick the little girl, um, you have a vision, and you, like, pass out. And then you wake up in the hospital, and you're back as Alyssa. And some detective who- Did I even write his phone down? I didn't. I literally wrote no notes for Clock Tower Ghost Mask, aka Clock Tower 2, because it's bullshit. But anyway, a detective is all like, I found you in this home with body parts. You're not a suspect. But it's weird. I know. He's like, something the fuck? weird. Something weird's happening. I'll, I understand I'll that I went <laughs> into this house where you were unconscious and covered in blood, but I'm going to be real with you. He's I don't like, think you did it. He's like, you're a girl, so you know. <laughs> Basically, you know. Now, that's honey, why. can you tell me which strong man just came up in there and killed everybody? But he's, he's like, there's some, there's something weird going on here with a plague, and he leaves the room. Basically. Do you ever see him again? And you're like, oh, I guess I'm in this hospital. I don't remember what happened. And when you leave, there are fucking zombies. Cough, cough, Resident Evil. By the way, there's basically no explanation to the zombies. You find notes that are like, oh man, we found a plague that made zombies. But there's literally no reason for there to be zombies. I, I, I like how people like to shit on new game eras, <laughs> but that shit nowadays would not fly. Literally. This would not fly for a sequel. The guys for Clock Tower were like, Resident Evil's doing really well. We need zombies. The only way this kind of shit could fly is if literally Sony wrote a check to Hideo Kojima and we're like, just fuck, so fuck anyway, with everybody. Anyway, you go through the game. Uh -huh. You find a nurse who's like, I need to kill myself because there are zombies and I can't deal. If you find her Fair. as if you find her as Alyssa, you can talk her out of killing herself. If you find her as Bates, Bates is like, you're weak, you should kill yourself. Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> See, and I love Bates, but that is dick. But Bates literally just has no patience for Bates anything. Bates probably watches The Walking Dead on AMC. Um, but yeah, so you need to find her as a lizard so she doesn't die, and later you find her and she's like, hey, I lived, and you're like, cool. And that's like the biggest choice in the whole game, basically. But anyway, um, so you're going throughout this hospital trying to leave because you're fine, and there are zombies, but you, you, you try to leave this hospital, and instead, you find your dad in a demon mask trying to kill your adoptive dad, who you don't realize is your adoptive dad. You find out you're adopted. That's why your parents. The guy who adopted you, um, dug you out of a grave because your real dad tried to bury you alive because of the Maxwell curse. Remember that statue? Yeah. So he believed that statue meant that every every other generation born child was a cursed demon. How so, the fuck do you keep living as a family so, then? So basically he At was like- At that point, just stop having kids. He was basically like, oh shit, I had a kid. 
She's gonna be a demon. I need to bury her alive. <laughs> okay. Or you could just so he buried stop no, having listen. sex. So he buried you alive, and your adoptive dad was like, "The fuck." Your adoptive dad was an employee of this guy, and was like, "Fuck my boss. I'm gonna dig up his daughter. He tried to bury alive and raise her as my own." Did the union protect him? <laughs> so he dug you up. And is like, you're my, you're my kid now. So you find out your real dad, who's in a demon mask, basically went crazy over this curse. And is now trying to murder your adoptive dad for, for digging you up. Meanwhile, it gets worse. Meanwhile, your adoptive dad had an actual daughter. A legit birth daughter, who is like... Hey, Dad, are you gonna be my dad? And he was like, fuck you, I have to- I have to emit vengeance on my boss. And gave her up for adoption to raise you. <laughs> okay, okay <face> so... Right <laughs> where do we go from here? So, his real daughter, throughout the entire game, is trying to murder you. Right? Yeah. She's trying to murder you. Throughout the entire game. Although, in order to murder you, because she wants to be the one to murder you, she saves you from several deaths by zombie. Because she's like, I'm gonna murder you. And you're like, who are you? And she's like, fuck you, I'm gonna murder you. Then she runs off into so the So finally, dark. no, no, finally she goes to murder you. And your adoptive dad is like, no, don't. And she's like, fuck you, real dad. And she kills herself. Did yep. She, did she believe that she was the adoptive daughter? No, no, no. No, 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 no. She was like, fuck you for raising a fake daughter. I'm gonna kill myself to make you feel bad. That's it. That's I, it. No, that's it. I remember once mocking Kingdom Hearts for being convoluted <laughs> and weird, and now I just kind of want to play that. At least I'll have Donald Duck and Goofy with and me. And meanwhile, poor Alyssa is like... The fuck? I don't know what's happening, and your adoptive dad is like, Oh yeah, you're not my real daughter, this is my real daughter, but she killed herself, so now you're my real daughter. <laughs> the whole thing is- the whole thing is a mess, Gideon. You're not joking, there were zombies. You're looking at- NO THERE WERE ZOMBIES IN KINGDOM HEARTS- uh, Jesus, we're talking about Kingdom Hearts in chat, I'm sorry. In Clock Tower 2, there were zombies. I'm um, not kidding, it was literally to compete with Resident Evil, that's it. Okay, so did you look up why yeah, there was zombies? Yeah, no, some notes are revealed that there was a plague. Yeah, no, I that know. That it's a bacteria. Yes, I'm getting to that. Oh my god. So, um, Maxwell, your real dad, had a statue with a contagion on it. Uh-huh. That it turns out was making your kids go crazy. And so you thought it was a curse, but it turns out it was a plague. So it was a family heirloom. It was a family heirloom, yes. And it's hinted that it's related to the statue from the Barrows family. That's the whole relation Next from this game. Next on Hoarders on A and E. <laughs> the whole relation from this game to the actual Kingdom... Jesus, I, we keep talking Kingdom Hearts in chat. The whole relation from this game to the Clock Tower series is literally this statue, because they're like, oh, it's a family heirloom. And it's cursed. That's the whole relation. Is a statue. Not cursed, you just didn't clean it. Right, exactly. It turns out there's just All you had to do was fucking buff it and polish it so, yeah, um, with antibacterial so, shit once. So it's left loosely unsure if a bait is a legit curse or just like mental illness. I know. You'd never find out if baits is like You'd never find out anything about zombies either. I know. But anyway, so so the real daughter kills herself. And your fake dad is like, she was my real daughter, but I care more about you because fuck my boss. God, what is this boss? <laughs> this game like... sucks! This game sucks! Clock Tower Ghost Mask, aka in America, Clock Tower 2 can go fuck itself, because it's not a part of the series whatsoever, it's bad. But anyway, um, so yeah. At the end of the game, which I think I quote, did I quote it? Hold on. Hold on. The end of the game has one of those quotes where it's like, we're trying to be deep, and you're like, as a viewer, you're like, you're not being deep, you're being fucking terrible. I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> you're not being deep, you're being pretentious. And I'm gonna read it. Yeah. Because it's bad. 
Because it's bad. It's, it's so bad. You, you <clears throat> just, as a writer, do you want me to gouge out my eardrums? Is that what you're doing to me? Is this what this podcast has become? Um, I meant to copy it in my notes, but... Okay. Shit. He says this, like, thing where he's trying to be, like, prophetic. It's like... Is it the last line? So, yeah. So, so to clarify, Alyssa... The character you're playing as was buried alive by her dad before your before her adoptive dad dug her up, right? Yeah. So at the end of the game, the detective who woke you up in the hospital, the game ends with you and him, like, looking over what happened. Because, um... And he's like, help me piece this together because none of this is making sense. And then a Capcom executive comes yeah, in and is. shoots him. It's not that you died there once already, you know. Yeah, because you know how she was oh, buried alive? Because she feels horrible for what happened. She was like, man, like, my dad's real daughter killed herself. There were zombies. All these people died. Like, my grandparents lost their daughter. I feel like shit. And this detective is like, well, you know, it's not like you died there once already. And it ends with her smiling like, oh, that was so prolific and wonderful. <laughs> it's a bad game. Yeah. Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within, a.k.a. Clock Tower Ghost Mask, is a bad game. It was made to compete with Resident Evil 2. Which is it getting a remake next year. It doesn't belong in the year. series. It's a shitty game. Shannon. That's the real daughter's name. Shannon. All right, well, Shannon is like, you ruined my life. Alright, so now we're on to Clock Tower 3, right? It's a bad game. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the series. Anyway. Turning it back on track. <laughs> Clock Tower 2 is bad, you guys. Don't play it. Yes. So, so, Clock Tower 3. getting back onto the actual Clock Tower series. I didn't mean to go on that long with that game. Clock Tower 3. One of the best games in the okay. series. Okay. I the, know, the main Clock character Tower is one, Alyssa. Clock Tower 1 was eh, but Clock Tower 3 is okay, actually... Okay, yes, but the I'm main... I'm getting to the... I have a half hour. I'm getting there. Have, have you been timing this? Yeah. Oh, okay. We started at 12.30. Yeah, I've been timing this. Okay. <clears throat> because you have this fun tra track record know, of repeating that Clock Tower 1 is an amazing game, and then then you go into all their different names and the translations. So anyway, um, so Clock Tower 3 yeah. starts out as another girl named Alyssa. She's not the girl from 2. Thank God. She is her own Alyssa. She's in a that boarding a school. Decision. She gets a letter from her mother, because her mother is an idiot. She gets a letter from her mother, who is like, Hey, Alyssa... I send you to boarding school because our family is a mess. And you need to stay in boarding school specifically this year. You are turning 15. Do not fucking leave boarding school. You need to stay in boarding school because you will die. Okay. Signed your mother. <laughs> and Alyssa's like, what? Wait, I thought you sent me here for, to further my education. What? So Alyssa is, is clear. I should probably read the actual note, but she's basically like, hey, Alyssa. Like, the actual note is basically like, I've been hiding a, a family secret from you. Yeah. But I can't tell you right now. For I'll your tell own you safety, in a year. for your own safety, please stay in your school. I love you. And even, even with that, you're like, why did you send this letter? You should have been like, hey, Alyssa, I love you, mom. Like, why would you send this letter? Her mom's an idiot. But anyway. All, all she's going to want to do is go so home. So Alyssa freaks out, obviously. Runs home. And it's like, Mom? Mom, are you okay? I got this weird letter and I'm really concerned. And you go home and your mom's not there. <clears throat> Instead, there's this weird old dude who is like, Oh, Alyssa, you and I are meant to be. Like, you and I, we're kindred spirits. Nope. We're like what is BFFs. The no, what we're is like the... BFFs, Alyssa. And your mom's gone, but we're BFFs. And Alyssa's like, um, who the fuck are you? And he's like, you're BFF, Alyssa. I said that already. And he dances with her, and she's like, fucking don't touch me, please. And he's like, lol, you're gonna be my best friend forever. And he runs upstairs. And she's like, which, by the way, Alyssa's family is rich and owns a lodging house. Much like Until Dawn. She calmly places her hand on the doorknob and fucking leaves, right? So, she goes to look for her mom. Nope. Um. That's a bad idea. And she goes into her mom's room and she finds a diary. Who And her in her diary, her mom is like, Oh my god, oh my god, what do I do? Alyssa turns 15 this year. Oh my god, oh my god, what do I do? And Alyssa's Normally like... Normally you talk to them about And Alyssa's puberty. like, what? 
and the diary is like, oh, what? Funny. And then Alyssa tries to leave the room and gets teleported to, like, 1940. Okay. <laughs> so she opens the door to 1940 and is like, wait, what? And 1940 is like, hey, there are bombs. And she's like, what? And there are bombs, and she hide. This is where the mocap is extremely relevant. So this game had a huge budget, and for anyone who doesn't know what mocap is, mocap is those dots you wear yeah. that tracks your movement. Yeah. And these actors were fidgety because literally she's like, back time was attempting to fly like a hummingbird. I'm fluttering, but Alyssa freaks the fuck out. Bombs are dro- I'm sorry, it might be 1940, not 1930, but bombs are dropping everywhere. Alyssa is fucking confused and hides under a bus and is like, why am I on the streets in London in 1940 or 1930? Um, okay. Hmm. So, so yeah, you're in the 1940s. 19... Yeah. Bombs are falling, you know, you're, like... Did she warn them you're about li- that Hitler which, the being way, a con- bad egg? It's confirmed you are 15. You are a 15-year-old girl shoved into the midst of basically World War II where there were, there were bombings. Yeah, you're in London, right? Mm-hmm. That was a thing the Germans mm-hmm. did to London. There was a big night where it was <sighs> a bomb city. So you run into this building. Uh-huh. Because you're confused as fuck, obviously. Um... And you encounter this poor girl. Her name is May. She's 12. And she is dead. Oh, well, she's not suffering. You you went to this building and you watch her running down the stairs from a serial killer who murders her on the staircase. He he crushes her skull with a mallet and murders her. Okay, full disclosure, bombs are dropping. So through this part, you're, run, room, you're running asshole. from the serial killer. What is his name? It's like the sledgehammer. He has a sledgehammer. That's what he's like known by. Um, but basically... Well, um, I'm surprised that he just just call him Hammer Man. But basically, you're, you're running from this guy, and you find out this girl named May. Her dad had to... Her mom died years ago. Her dad had to go off and fight in this war. And apparently to all the men in the war... This radio broadcast was going to play to them of whoever won this piano contest. And his daughter was trying to win this piano contest, so her piano recital would play to her dad in the war. Wow, that's it's a bummer. It's heartbreaking because she actually lost the contest and then was murdered by a serial killer. It's like heartbreaking. Yeah, she lost. Um, God, after this podcast, we're going to so need to like, put on So you run into this ghost videos. who is torn trying to master this piano recital so her dad and her dad died in the war as well you actually find out he was blown up by a bomb and you find his pocket watch well they're Stop you, putting ghosts you to rest, reunite I'm them you Good. reunite them in heaven Good. and they hug and it's really sweet and you stop this serial killer from being a dick is that your magical this, power? Yes. Reuniting this, ghosts in you find heaven. Out, you find making out. Making killers realize they're you a are, dick. You, you find out you are something called a rooter. You don't know what that is yet. A rooter? A rooter with a D. A rooter. Rooter? You mean a rudder? It's R-U-D-E-R? You mean a fucking rudder? You're called, you're called a rooter. <laughs> no, 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 that's um, a fucking rudder. Shit. Hold I think on. I was spelling it wrong. Wait. I guess it doesn't matter. Um... You find out you're a lineage of, of something called a rooter. Um, oh my god. God, now I wanna know if I spelled this right. Wait. Well, a rudder, are you D D R O O D E R. You're a rooter. R O D E R. That's a That's a name of yeah, a fucking yeah, moped. R O O D E R. That's a fucking um, moped. So I can't Shut up. I fucking so, yeah. can't do this so, after a scooter. Through this, you <laughs> you you reunite this girl with her dad by finding his pocket watch. You tell her, like, listen, like, because she's stuck in this loop of trying to master his piano recital, and you're like, listen, like, you're dead. Your dad is dead. Here's his watch. Because what's important is, as a rooter, you find these sentimental items <sighs> to teach people... To teach ghosts that they are dead. It's a fucking scooter. I know, I know. Let me it's, finish. It's, it's is that what the person's driving? Oh She's God. just going around war torn London on a fucking scooter, fucking chilling with ghosts. Are you done? I need a laugh after that. You fucking made me bummed out. But well, they get reunited in heaven. They're dead. But you watch them hug. That 
They're dead! But you don't know what heaven is like. Maybe they're chilling out in heaven. Like, I, You know what? It is definitely better than Clock Tower. Anyway. And everything so, about it. So you find out you're something called a rooter. Yeah. Um. At the age of 10, you start developing signs that you were a rooter. Um, it's passed within your bloodline. At the age of 15, when you... Technically, you're 14 right now. Yeah. On the eve of your 15th birthday, you reach max rooter strength. And, and then it's all downhill? <laughs> Shut up. So, yeah, no. basically... No, yeah, it does. At the, what kind of dumbass fucking So, basically, at the age that? of 15, you become max rooter strength. And then by the age of 20, your powers die and you're a normal person again. The fuck so, is that? So anyway, um, that's why your mother was like, "That's dumb." Listen, you need to stay in school. No, that's dumb. So you're, you what's are, even worse? You could be doing a lot of soul freeing and shit what's even for worse? a good five year window so of giving even peace worse, and shit to what's people. What's even worse is that this passes through the bloodline, right? Through the bloodline, only women get it. So it's it's majorly hinted that rooters are baby factories because like. There's a peak window as a rooter, and it's it's majorly hinted that you need to have a kid before you turn 20 to pass it on. It's majorly hinted. So basically, you're like a baby factory of trying to produce more rooters. This is a big thing. But anyway. um, That's fair. You basically- No wonder your mom sent you to an all-girls school. Basically- like, Please, Alyssa, come home a lesbian. <laughs> but yeah, um- so basically you find out you're this you're this magical girl who can summon a bow and arrow to stop magical serial killers. Because yes, they're fucking magical. The sledgehammer guy you encounter, they're called entities. Um They're called serial an killers. An entity, I wrote it down, an entity because it's confusing as fuck. An entity is uh, a uh, monstrous akin to creation normal clock power. That Probably. basically entities are actually related to rooters. Yeah. So basically, one of your relatives decided, like, oh shit, you're magical? Well, I need to eat your heart. <laughs> Where do you go with that leap of logic? An entity is a Where monster. do you fucking go to go, hey, Sharon's my niece and she has magical powers. Grab steak knife. What the fuck? So I, I, I condense it in my notes. Um... An entity is a monstrous creation created by sacrificing the heart of a rooter at the peak of her power, aka on their 15th birthday, which is why the game takes place now, because it's the eve of your 15th birthday, you're about to turn 15. <coughs> the person who performs the ritual to become an entity must be a blood relative. That's really important. That, that old man is your relative. Basically. You're basically being hinted that he's your fucking relative. You don't know who he is. You call him the Dark Gentleman because he's basically controlling these entities to come at you and try and capture you. Uh, and the Sledgehammer guy is one of them, and you stop him, and it's whatever. Um, so the Dark Gentleman is actually trying to become an entity because he loves Alyssa so much he wants to be with her forever. Well, that's really hard if you fucking kill her and eat her no, heart. No, but if he eats his heart, he's with her forever. That's not how <laughs> any of that works. Um, so anyway, yeah, I wrote it down. So the rooters gain their power on their 10th birthday. When you turn 10, it's discovered if you're a rooter or not. You know, when they when they eat the heart, do they call it a and snack attack? And they become the most powerful on, their, on the eve of their 15th birthday is at peak power. It's when they are the most powerful. Um, and basically, by the time they turn 20, it's basically gone. Yeah, you said it basically that. declines, yeah. yeah, so I went over yeah. that. So anyway, so you fight a bunch of serial killers um, throughout the game. Because basically, so the entities who have done this and become an entity are basically immortal serial killers. They're, they literally just love killing people. And actually, one of them that you encounter, I wrote this down, one of them is actually based off a real serial killer. Um, is it the slice and dice guy? I wish, no. <laughs> uh, fuck. That's like the two things that I remember from fucking Clock Tower. Alyssa! Choice no, and Joyce! Yep. Yeah. Because the voice there's acting was so superb. So there's this guy, um... Chopper. So you encounter this old couple, this, this son and his grandmother, or his mother, it might be his mother and his grandmother, but um... Yep. One of them is based off a real serial killer who would boil his victims. It's pretty rough. Boil? He would boil them, yeah. Mm. So, in, in London, 
in accordance with the law. Um, if there was no body, you couldn't be committed, uh, you couldn't be, uh, arrested for doing a crime. So he believed, oh, so if I melt them in acid, I can't be convicted for doing that. That was his logic. So he went on killing people and boiling them in acid. Like, he was a legit serial killer, a real-life serial killer. He would boil people in acid because he was like, oh, no body, no crime, because that was the law. Fun story, like, the, the hammer guy was literally just named Sledgehammer. He was, yeah. And he was, and, and the law was like, no, you can still be convicted if we have enough blood to determine you murdered someone. And he was like, oh, no, you can't. Biscuits. Yeah, so I just thought it was a fun fact that one of the serial killers in this game was based off a legit serial killer. Um, I swore I wrote his name down. I want, because I thought that was like an interesting fact. Oh, here we go. Um, John Hay. Yeah, no body, no crime. One of the serial killers is literally named, like, after okay. John Hay, who was a legit so, serial killer. What? So, you're going through this web of serial killer sorry, monsters. Sorry, sorry. Well, what I love about Clock Tower so much is that it has as a root in the idea of serial killing. Yeah. And then it became That's not something super... you should no, love, no, no. and as your husband, I'm worried. <sighs> Shut up. So what I love is that it became, it became supernatural. It took the idea of serial killing and made it supernatural. So in Clock Tower 3, these serial killers strived to become immortal by... They had relatives who were rooters and ate their hearts and became immortal, like the Sledgehammer. He can do... Like, um... Every serial killer you find in the game, like the Sledgehammer, the Sledgehammer was executed in prison before killing this girl who you rescue. Because yep. he became immortal after death through the power of eating a rooter's heart. Yeah. I hope I it's a hearty it meal, though. Huh? I hope the meal was hearty enough for their Shut appetite. Up. I just thought it was interesting that one of them was actually based off a real killer named John mm. Hay. If you want to look him up, that's the name. Um, Please don't. He's the second or third serial killer in the game. But he, he murdered the old couple in the game, if you want to look it up. He, I mean, they were old. So, you know, he they're... burned them alive. They well, technically, it was the son of an of an old woman. So technically, he wasn't old. We're all the sons of old women. He was Even caring you. for her during during some period, and he came in and burned them alive. And he was like, "I'm done, mom and dad." And, yeah. So anyway, um, she so goes throughout the game as Alyssa, and you start discovering you're this magical girl, and your mother sent you this letter, which tipped you off they were a magical girl. She couldn't just leave you in fucking school. <laughs> But she tips you off that you're a magical girl. But yeah, you can summon this bow. And uh, so the scissor man makes an appearance. This is where Slice and Dice comes in. Uh, instead of being his own man, he's a twin with this girl. And they're called um, uh, the scissor have... men. Even though it's a scissor man, the scissor woman. But they're called you don't the know how men. she self-identifies. Okay. Well, you kill her first. Because much like an anime... He just watched you fight her. And then when you kill her, he's like, well, fuck you, I'm gonna avenge my sister. So you fight them one at a time for some reason. They're idiots. Is um, the other one standing from behind adding narrative to her? Oh, person? right. So there's this kid named Dennis who you grew up with, who's introduced. And for some reason, your mother gave him the key to half the house. <sighs> just in passing. But this is where the mocap really comes in, because he breaks into your room... And is fluttering around like an idiot. Um. Alyssa, yeah. Alyssa, there are serial killers yeah. in ancient London. He's like, Alyssa, you're back from boarding school. I love you, by the way. I know we barely knew each other as children. <laughs> now, anyway. That actually sounds like a legit youth, anyway, youthful boy. Anyway, so as you go throughout the game, you find out the dark gentleman who you meet in the beginning who is like, I want to be with you forever. You're a rooter and I want to eat uncle, your heart. your uncle, isn't it? He's your grandfather. That's and actually, throughout gross. the game, you find letters about how you talk fondly about him. Because you and your grandfather had a good relationship, and then it turns out he wants to eat your heart and become an entity serial killer bullshit. Thanks, Grandpa. Um, but yeah, you find these letters, it turns Taking out he- Taking being an asshole baby to the next level. It turns out, much like Mr. Barrows, he murdered your dad, because your dad was like, Hey, this murder thing is weird, we should move away and get away from it. And your grandfather was like, fuck you, you're an idiot, and murdered him. <laughs> Guess his daughter had a problem with that. 
She didn't know because he did it while while she was babysitting you as a baby. He was talking with your dad on a balcony, and your dad was like, "So we're thinking about moving because this is weird." And your grandfather was like, "You're an idiot!" and pushes him off a balcony. Butterfingers. So your mom had no fucking clue. She just came out, and your grandfather was like, "Oh no, he fell. It was an accident." Was he drinking? No, I pushed him. Wait, nope. Nope, I've been drinking. So yeah, actually in the game you can find a hidden room with a skeleton in it. And a lot of fans theorize that that's Alyssa's dad. Because you find notes where he's like, I have to hide this from the police. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's heavily believed oh. that, that, like, he just hid her what dad's did I do skeleton to you? in the house. What did I do to you? But yeah, um, so, so yeah, what I find the most interesting is that the grandfather, who was really interested in this Rudu thing, right? The grandfather who I mentioned who's a dark gentleman, this is where the clock tower reference comes in, he is related to the Barrows. This family is called the Hamiltons, yep. but he married into it and they kept the Hamilton name, but he is actually a Barrows. That's where the relation comes everything. in. Right, exactly. And I, I screen capped this because it's so ridiculous. But he comments that he finds this crest with an A, a D, and an N on it. Because the grandfather gets so obsessed in this Rooter thing. Assholes, dicks, and nonsense. Because the Rooter thing is unrelated to the Barrows thing. The Rooter's their own thing, and the Barrows gets married into it. I'm glad this is a whimsical world. But he's like... The A, D, and N crests also make perfect sense now. Lord Burroughs, beloved daughter Annabelle, his first name Darcy, because the original Barrows who started the cult, his name was Darcy Barrows. Okay. So, Darcy Barrows from the cult, from the rest of the, of the Clock Terror series, the reason he started this cult is because he was a rich bitch. He was in a carriage with his daughter Annabelle. And he had heard about this whole rooter thing. Mm hmm And he thought his daughter was a rooter. And he was like, I guess I'm gonna have to eat her heart and become an entity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and before he could... Because that's just, that's just what could, daddies do! Before he could, the townspeople were like, you guys are a fucking cult, so we're gonna... We're gonna murder you, we're gonna murder your family. So they murdered his daughter before he could do this. And he was like... <laughs> just snapping his fingers like, oh, so close. So his daughter got murdered in a mob meeting before this even happened. Um, which, which... I imagine him going to the mayor and having... I have a grievance. The mob killed my daughter before I they got to do it. Heart. They didn't even <laughs> save me a doggy the bag. Ruder thing, the ruder thing only passes through women. Only women could be ruders. Y Men yes. couldn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So basically, something to do he with the couldn't uterus. become an entity because his daughter got murdered. It's basically... He writes a journal about it, about this travesty, and it's like, you know your daughter was murdered, right? And you're just upset you couldn't become a mortal. <laughs> But yeah, and so then no one thinks, let's just kill him. <laughs> well, they did. They did try to kill him, actually. They no, stormed... after the fact. They did. They murdered her and then stormed his castle. But of course he had she had fight. high defenses and basically murdered them back. <laughs> he basically was the rich bitch who was like, fuck you, you're poor. And they were like, shit, you're right. We can't do anything. <laughs> Where are the assassins when you need but them? But yeah, so eventually... Darcy had this guy, the grandfather, eventually down the line after the whole Clock Tower series, and he had this kid. And this kid got into the Maxwell family and was like, Shit, rooters, like my granddad talked about. Okay. And so his comment is that, oh, the A, D, and N. They're just like Lord Barrows' daughter Annabelle, the A, and the D, like Darcy, and the N, like... Darcy's wife. They're just like me. My my name is Dick, and my daughter is Nancy. Your name is Dick. And my granddaughter's Alyssa. This, this is a sign that I need to be like the Barrows. Is his name really Dick? Yes. He's a dumb Dick. dickhead, yeah. <laughs> so he believes because he finds this crest from his family with an A, D, and an N. He's like, this is a sign. I need to eat my granddaughter's heart. If we took... 
literally any indication of the lessons of our ancestors, we would be killing and enslaving one another and probably smoking some sort of thing we shouldn't be smoking. So maybe don't fucking look at crests for moral guidance. So yeah. Fucking be better. So, um... So anyway, he resurrects Lord Darcy, his grandfather. Oh, uh, why would you... He do... resurrects him. Okay. Um, his grandfather is like, why are you resurrecting me? And merges with him into an ultimate boss battle you have to fight. In a clock tower. Because the game is called Clock Tower, so they had to involve a clock tower in some way. A clock tower actually has nothing to do with this game. They just, it's just where the final boss fight takes place. You, you shouldn't have named it Clock Tower. <laughs> Well, it's related to the Clock Tower games in the sense that the Barrows, a.k.a. the Burrows, were involved. You find out you're related to the Barrows, a.k.a. the Cult, because yeah. your grandfather came from that family. That's the whole relation to the Clock Tower series. But yeah, you fight through a shit ton of serial killers, you get to your granddad, who's like, we need to be, give we need to be get together forever, and you're like, Grandpa, that's weird, and you're like, fuck you, I'm gonna eat your heart. Or rather, your grandfather's like, fuck you, I'm gonna eat your heart. <laughs> and then you're like, don't be a dick. And he's like, Somehow, I, that's my name. So you fight him. You don a Greek outfit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I lied. First, you're tied up by your grandfather because he gets the jump on you somehow. And then fucking Dennis. Did I mention Dennis's importance yet? Mentioned oh, yeah. He's creepy. Dennis, who, who was your neighbor... You grew up together before you were sent to boarding school. Uh -huh. Your mom was like, hey, Dennis, I know you have nothing to do with this magical girl bullshit. Take this key and hide it forever so my daughter doesn't find it. He comes in and gives it to you. Of course. He's like, Alyssa, I love you. Your mom gave me this key and told me not to give it to you here. <laughs> what if the key was the key to her nuclear heart? And then you just blew up Alyssa. So, Dennis. The key was to um unlock her magical. Grief, it was basically to unlock magic the magical bulge. girl powers. I forget. I forget what. So exactly. if you could just literally take the key and so, throw yeah, it in the goddamn ocean. Your granddad ties you up, and you're like, "Oh no, I'm a mistress. I'm I'm a damsel in distress." And Dennis is like, "I'll save you out of nowhere, even though he has no magical powers whatsoever." Does he die? No, unfortunately. Your granddad is like, fuck you, Dennis, I'm gonna kill you. And you're like, no, I suddenly have the strength to fight back. <laughs> and you magical girl transform into a Greek outfit with a bow as your ruder powers ignite. And midnight happens, and it's now your 15th birthday. Which is what your- which, by the way, your- the ruder's heart can only be eaten on their 15th birthday. Anytime past that, and it loses its effect. So that's why your granddad was really, really adamant on eating your heart now. He's because like, it's your 15th birthday. He's like, sweetie, sweetie, I know you didn't want me Which, around your daughter's 15th birthday, but I got her a... I want to comment how gross it is, because it's basically really, really hinted in your mom's diaries. You find a ton of your mom's diaries who are like, yeah, so I met this guy and I love him and all, but... I don't really want kids now, but I have to have kids now because if I don't, a rooter won't be born. But it's you really hinted. Didn't want a rooter it's as really a daughter. That the closer to twenty you have children, the less likely you're going to have a rooter kid. It's really hinted that you're like a baby factory. It's gross. And this is also I can't why comment on how gross that this is. This is also man. why haunting grounds can die in a fire. I'm going to get into that. Uh, I know I used to tell you how much I wanted to see Haunting Grounds, and now I don't. Haunting Grounds can go fuck itself. I'm All right, into that. so... I'm... But anyway, so yeah, so your mom, you find out, really didn't want to have a baby before 20, but she got knocked up because she was in love with this guy. And she was like, well, shit, now I'm having a ruder baby, probably. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. These ruders seem to be the root of the goddamn problem. So, so yeah, you turn to a magical girl, you defeat your granddad... Uh, you find out your granddad did kill your mom. You're basically an orphan now. But I guess it's a happy ending because you stopped everything from happening. And you live together with Dennis. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, um, Clock Tower they had a strong start with a weekend is basically my point. <laughs> the Capcom finish. 
The Capcom finish. Oh, uh, it led to so. So this is getting back to the whole um, Clock Tower Three. The point of Clock Tower Three was supposed to be a revival for the series. They Good paid luck. for mocap. They paid for special effects. They are, you could tell the budget for this game was so high, but there was no marketing, and so it died. And Clock Tower died with it. I probably has that trend. Um, but they created two spin-off games. So during Clock Tower 3's development, another game was being called Haunting Grounds because they were worried Clock Tower 3 was going to die. And in response, they made a spin-off game while also not marketing it <laughs> called Haunting Grounds. Okay. Haunting Grounds is technically a Clock Tower game. Of course it is. In the sense that it takes place about a girl trapped in a mansion in a weird cult vibe. And that is the whole deal, yes. So, we're going to Haunting Grounds now, because Clock Tower 3 is the end of the Clock Tower series, but Haunting Grounds is technically in the same universe as Clock Tower. Yes. Because it has a dude who is in a cult that is hinted at that is the same cult as Clock Tower, and that's the whole relation. You play as another girl named Alyssa. <laughs> I'm going to double check, but I'm 95% certain your name is Alyssa. Um... Nope, I lied, it's Fiona. In the casting, it was going to be Alyssa, but they changed it to Fiona because they wanted to make sure it could survive outside of Clock Tower. So her name is Fiona. I thought it was Alyssa, but her name is Fiona. You wake up in a, in a mansion with, and you're like, why the fuck am I in this mansion? I'm gonna go over briefly, because we're basically done with the Clock Tower series, and I'm gonna delve into that. But her name is Fiona. You wake up in a mansion. You find a dog who wants to help you. And you have magical powers. Mm -hmm. And that's how it relates to Clock Tower. It loosely deals with the same cult who believes um, that... Um, shit, what are they called? Fiona is the daughter of a family um, known as... Shit. You know how, how Alyssa was a rooter? Yeah. Fiona comes from a family with a similar premise? Are they pooters? Where they're a magic... <laughs> Where they're a magical girl, fuck, I don't remember their name. They're but a magical girl, fuck. The up. difference is, instead of having magical powers, you have a magical uterus. <laughs> Your magical power is that whoever fucks you, no. right? No. You have a baby no. who is their clone. Mm -hmm. You're, you have a magical cloning uterus. <laughs> So the reason oh, the main protagonist wants you is because he wants to be able to live forever by constantly having you spawn babies of him. You will eventually <laughs> die. And um That's not how we more He was real So you were in a car accident with your parents. No. So your whole family dies out but you. Mm -hmm. So because of this fact, he was really scared mm -hmm. he wouldn't be able to spawn babies out of you. Mm -hmm. So he made a ton of homunculi just in case. Who he tried to replicate after himself, but didn't. They all became fucked up experiments. Who instead also want to make you have babies of them. So the entire time they're all chasing you to make baby factories. Of themselves. The worst part is the main protagonist not only wants you to have baby clones of him, he's your grandfather. Antagonist. He's your grandfather. He's not the protagonist. He's your grandfather. We are not having the protagonist be a grandpa who wants to fuck your his granddaughter to create clones of himself. Um. Jesus Christ. So, this part can be edited out if it's too much. Basically. The, the, uh, FYI, basically, uh, the FYI, reason... the Japanese name for this game is Demento. Yeah. Because this is fucking demented. So basically, the reason Haunting Ground can go fuck itself is because the, That's literally the, no, the no, no, premise. no. The main ending, which this might have to be edited out, but the main ending, which is so easy to get, it is so easy to get this ending. It's not the true ending, but it's the most basic, easy to get ending. If you if you don't treat the dog right, as in if you don't give it commands, if you ignore the dog and you're like, I have this companion, I don't know how to use him, uh -huh. which most people did, you don't use the dog right. During a part where you get kidnapped, the dog doesn't save you, and you get the bad ending. The bad ending is, Grandpa you gets are, what wants. it's basically hinted that you were sexually assaulted by your grandfather, aka you were raped, 
by your grandfather. Easy. It shows you pregnant while he's standing behind you, basically like, yes, I get to live forever because you will forever have clone babies of me. And that's the the main ending. It's not the true ending. You should have just said that's a trigger warning. Well, I imagine that's going to get edited out. That's why I use the word sexually assaulted, and I use both words because you can edit out the triggering word. Basically, basically, it's very hinted that your grandfather impregnates you unwillingly because you are very sadly sitting in a chair pregnant while he basically is standing behind you like, sweet, I get to live forever because you're going to forever have babies of me if I die. Haunting Grounds can go fuck itself. <laughs> and the true ending is- The true ending is you escape and he dies. And you have a dog. I don't know why you would need <laughs> a true ending. ending to that. Well, because- it's if you don't know what the fuck is going on and because the game is like oh yeah you can give your dog commands but it doesn't tell you hey give your dog commands or else he hates you it doesn't tell you that it's basically you would think like that not bossing the dog around would be but you can ignore you can complete the game fine without using the dog wow. if anything using the dog is more annoying. You have to train the dog. The dog will do things wrong, and you have to tell the dog, hey, don't do that. And if you don't tell the dog, like, if you don't discipline the dog, the dog hates you and leaves you to get kidnapped by your pedo grandfather. Because, by the way, you're, like, 15 in this game. Yeah, I'm aware. Haunting Grounds can go fuck itself. Haunting Grounds can go fuck itself. I used to be really into this game, but fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. It promotes team like teen pregnancy in the worst way. Fuck that. Um that's haunting grounds. Um Nightcry is stupid but way less fucked up. <laughs> Nightcry was kickstarted. Which by the way, if any of you who are watching this kickstarted Nightcry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nightcry is dumb. Okay, Nightcry... you, you say that like the last three Nightcry... hours has not been a testament to this. <laughs> Nightcry isn't fucked up, it's just dumb. So, Nightcry was the, the literal creators of Clock Tower uh, lost their jobs at Capcom because Clock Tower 3 didn't sell well. And they basically started a Kickstarter like, hey, we want to make more games. If you guys love this, please kickstart it. Um... So yeah, so Nightcry I'm is- I'm writing a cry for help. <laughs> what? What are you doing? I have learned too much about incestuous grandparents today that there I There is just... a lot of incestuous grandparents. What though. the fuck, Capcom? I know. There's horror and then there's fucked up shit. Okay? Well, Clock Tower 3 did it better than Haunting Grounds. Haunting God, Grounds yeah. is fucked up. Yeah, I don't- I never want to see Haunting Grounds, like, ever now. Yeah. Fuck that. Because mm -hmm. when we played it, you really didn't use the dog because you were oh, like, that's you didn't. Yeah. That's why I thought about this and I'm like, oh my that god, Kitty had never used the dog. He would have gotten, he would have gotten the the fucked up ending to that game. Fuck that. I would have been pissed off, by the way, if you got that ending. Um. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because because Haunting would... Grounds already was so sexual. The intro cutscenes are you walking in like a see through sheet, like. Why am I in this castle? Then we and get every, a little, little... Every, every antagonist in the game wants to have babies Then you with find you. out the game director's, like, granddaughter the was fucking... The one girl! Fucking there's one girl, they're all called homunculi, but there's one girl who is literally, like... Who Help literally me. talks so much about your body. Like, it's so disgusting. Like, Holland Grounds is a disgusting game. I'm sorry. All right, so Nightcry. So Nightcry is hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nightcry is fucking funny because it's so bad. So Nightcry, the only relation Nightcry has to the actual Clock Tower series is the main character has the last name Simpson. You remember Jennifer? Yes. It's hinted she's related to Jennifer. It's very loosely hinted. So Nightcry takes place on a boat. You're on a school field trip. Which, by the way, must be a private school field trip, because you're on a fucking ritzy boat. You play as three characters. The first two characters really don't matter. The third character is the main character of the game. The first character you play as is Monica. She has E-sized tits? 
Is E a cup size? Is E a cup size? She has giant boobs. Nightcry. Nightcry. Monica. Monica. Look, yeah, look her up. I'm not even kidding. Look up her shit. Look at her boobs. Okay, she has yeah. Giant boobs. You this play is the as only her. time you're gonna hear a background be like, look at her tits. Even though she's in high school, she's drunk as fuck in the opening of Nightcry. Oh, this is a high school. That's not a high schooler. It is hinted that this is, you know, like prom night. It's hinted that this is their prom night. That it's on a boat. Oh so technically, she's graduated high school. <laughs> technically, she's a cop. She's on her way to college if she's not using her body to get a job. Yeah. So anyway, you play as her. Hey, and it don't, really, don't, <clears throat> don't, don't shame her for. Getting... It really accents her boobs. The camera is really on her boobs, and you're like, I'm Monica, and you talk to this coat check, and you're like, Can you take my coat? And the coat check has a bleeding cut who he keeps scratching. His nickname that people call him is like Itchy. This guy named Itchy and he's trying to be like, yeah, I'll take your coat. I'll take your coat, boob lady. <laughs> but you give him your coat and he's and and she's like, Have you seen my friend? He has brown hair. <laughs> and he's like, I mean, there's a lot of people with brown hair, so I don't think so. <laughs> It's so bad. It, Nightcry is so bad. Um, which, by the way, one of the Kickstarter rewards was to be in the game. And later on in the game, you can find a carriage, uh, I'm sorry, a cargo bay of a bunch of people who Kickstarted to be in the game just hiding in there like, oh god, I don't want to die. Um, <clears throat> anyway. So, you leave the room and it accents how he's scratching his bloody wound, and Monica's like, Ill grouse. And you run over, and you run into this guy named Harry, who you apparently went to school with, and Harry is like, hey, Monica, you're hot. Come date me. And Monica's like, Harry, you weirdo, get me a soda. And Harry's like, okay. And Harry puts money in a vending machine, and he goes to get the soda. And Monica's like, this boat's boring. And Harry's like, hey, this vending machine is trying to eat me. <laughs> and Monica's like, what? And Harry's like, yeah. This vending machine is trying to eat me. And the vending machine eats him. Gideon. The vending machine. The vending machine eats him. It sucks him in into a bloody pulp because it's a fucking vending machine who cannot fit a human body. It sucks his body in. Blood spills everywhere. And Monica is like, what the literal fuck? And you play as her running away from the vending machine, who spawns a person with giant scissors. Remember the giant scissors? <laughs> so yeah. Scissor me too. So the first half of, of Night Cry, you're running from this guy from scissors. Um, I actually forget how it ends, that's how bad it is. The first half. But it ends, and then you're switched to the next character named Leonard. Uh oh. So you find out as Leonard at the beginning of the game. All the students were in a cocktail party. <laughs> cocktail tower, cocktail party. Um, We've come full circle. And, um... When they all scurried off, um... He saw the scissor man and was like, Oh shit, I need to go get help. And got on a life raft to go get help. And Is he got on a life raft to go get help, huh? This shit got kickstarted? This shit got kickstarted. Was it the development team? It was the this? guy who made who who literally made Clock Tower. Got Why would you got let go this? from Capcom after Capcom 3, and he kickstarted a new game. And called it the spiritual successor to Cap to, to Clock Tower. It really has nothing to do with Clock Tower. Well it can't. So I'm loosely going into it no, just you, because you can't because they, they only IP Okay. Exactly. Yeah. The only co but, the only connection is that the main character, her last name is Simpson, and it's believed she's related to Jennifer Simpson, the main character of Clock Tower. So anyway, so he goes on a boat to try and get help because the radio is down in the boat. He tries to go to the captain's quarters to get to the radio and the captain is dead and the the radio's down. So he goes in a lifeboat with some friends and it's like, hey, Something fucked up is happening. Let's go get help. And they find an island where they see a radio tower to go get a radio. And on that island, there's a cult. Cough, cough. It's the clock tower cult. Cough, cough. But they can't legally say it is. Anyway, 
there's a cult there and they try to stop you and you make it to a radio tower and you're like help there's a boat that needs help there's a serial killer on the boat please help this game got a fucking two yep it's really bad it is really that's itchy we go back that's itchy see that's the guy that's the guy who checks your coat they they nicknamed him itchy because he has a cut and he scratches it mm, go back yeah, it's Harry. That's the guy who got sucked in the vending machine who I mentioned. <laughs> That's him. It kind of <laughs> looks like a tool. Well, apparently he's a sleazy idiot who got sucked in the vending machine. Anyway. Um, so Leonard then travels back by boat after contacting the Coast Guard. And on his way back... The developer is named Nude Maker. I know. I know. And we wonder why I know, they have I know. A... Anyway, so on his way back, he finds a man who was beaten near to death. And he's like, I need to save this man. He tries to bring him back, and the man wakes up and tries to murder them all. And the scene ends. And then switches to the true main character. Um, shit. I don't remember her name. She's basically called, I'm sorry if this is triggering, but she's called the Suicide Queen. Because apparently everyone in her school... Knows she has tried to commit suicide several times and doesn't give a shit. And they just call her the Suicide Queen. Have you thought that that might make her try to do it and again? And so, this oh. now takes place at the beginning of what happened. It takes place before oh. everything happens. You start off as her- oh, fuck, what's her name? Her last name is Simpson because she's related to Jennifer. That's the Monica. whole clock tower connection. No, not Monica. Monica's the girl you play in the beginning who you find out is a giant bully to this girl. You find out Monica's a fucking bully and could really go die, but she she lives at the end, in the real ending. Anyway, um, hold on, let me go look up her name, because I'm feeling like an asshole if I don't remember her name. <clears throat> name is something since chapter three. Rooney! Her name is Rooney Simpson. That's the only relation really to the Clock Tower games, apart from the cult, who they don't name, because they want you to believe it's the same cult from Clock Tower. Anyway, he plays Rooney Simpson. She's called the Suicide Queen because she's apparently tried to kill herself several times in high school and no one gives a shit and they just call her this. I am sorry, like, trigger warning, I'm sorry. Um, cause she no, even no, it's, She it's... even tries to do it in this game. She looks over the edge. Why? Would and a little you... girl comes up to her and is like, isn't the water so pretty? You should go, you should go jump in it. And she's like, yeah, I should. And you find out why later. You oh. find out. Well, she doesn't. I know, but, but why would you say she's that? She's basically, oh. it's a shame because she is phrased as a very depressed character, and you find out why. And she's actually very relatable. It's just it's written poorly. It's written so poorly. So they kept with the <laughs> clock tower fucking motif! <laughs> anyway, so you play as Rooney for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, You find out Leonard, the guy from Chapter 2, is actually her guardian. And you find out he's dating another teacher. He's a teacher at your high school, and he's dating another teacher who's a mega bitch who dies later, and she fucking deserves it. But she comes up, and she's like, Leonard, how long do you care for this girl? She's 18. You should kick her the fuck out so we can be together. Okay? Rooney, you suck. Get the fuck out of his house so we can be together. And Leonard's like, well, she tried to leave once, and I, try and I wanted to stop her because she's not old enough to make those decisions, and I care about her. What the fuck is her name? Uh, damn, what's her name? She has a name! She's a giant bitch! Um, fuck. Uh, I don't remember her name, I give up. It's but I'm gonna call her, I'm gonna call her Rich Bitch because she has like an expensive watch, watch and shit. Okay. And she's into Leonard. Leonard looks like like, 20 years her senior, by the way. Like, Leonard looks like an old man, and this other teacher looks like she's in her 30s. I'm gonna phrase that right now. This okay. other teacher, rich bitch, is like, Rooney? Consider me phrased. Rooney, I know you just graduated high school, but you're old enough to be on your own, so me and Leonard can be together, you can fuck off. I hate her. It's okay. a shame, because she's like the only woman of color in this game. And she's a giant bitch. I know this is gonna be probably, mm. that's probably the end of now, but she's a giant bitch. No, no, it's just. <laughs> I know. Job, I know. Job I'm aware. <laughs> putting no minorities in um, your game. She's like the only woman of color, and she's a huge oh, bitch. Oh my god! It's yep. like such a shame. But anyway, 
Um, she dies later. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that. She dies later. Oh, with that attitude. Uh, so does Leonard. <laughs> oh. I know, because Leonard is truly looking out for Rooney. Leonard is like the only person who cares about Rooney, where he's like, no, I'm worried about her because she has suicidal tendencies. And I actually give a shit. I want her to be okay. Mm. But anyway, so, so Rooney meets this guy named Jerome. And Jerome is white guy incarnate who became a famous train conductor. He is a famous train conductor, and Rooney doesn't care, but Monica is like, I'm gonna marry him, and he's gonna be my sugar daddy, so I can have kids and they can be happy forever, and Rooney, suicide bitch, get the fuck out, because I want to date him. <laughs> it's this horrible thing. Anyway, so you follow Jerome to his room, because for some reason Jerome is into you, and you follow Jerome to his room, and the scissor- it's called the scissor walker, by the way, but scissor walker spawns- and Jerome heroically stops Scissor Walker so you can run, and that's where the murders happen. Um, so as Rooney, you fought, you eventually find Leonard uh, as a head on a skeleton, basically. <laughs> I don't know how medical science advanced this far, but you find him as a living head on a skeletal body, where basically his flesh and organs have been stripped for whatever reason, and he literally is like, please kill me. And you have to kill him for the good ending by cutting off his life support. I know. I'm aware. I know. Nightcry is a really bad game. Anyway, so you that murder Leonard. $374,000 for production. Uh, you find Rich Bitch. On Kickstarter. Um, oh. You find out Rich Bitch died by Scissor Walker while, while trying to run away. You're, you're in, like, the ventilation system trying to keep quiet. And she gets, her dead body gets shoved into the ventilation and she dies. Basically everyone dies by Sister Walker. Which, by the way, Sister Walker is an idiot. You're allowed to believe Sister Walker is a grown adult. But you evade him by hiding behind movie theater seats. By hiding behind bookshelves. By hiding behind the most obvious things. And Sister Walker is like... Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? <laughs> I can't find her because I'm Sister Walker. And I'm an idiot. When you say scissor walker, I literally imagine that their legs are just a pair of anyway, scissors. Anyway, so the only way to get the good ending to this game uh, is to find a hidden note on a computer. Specifically on the guy who owns the boat, who you have one conversation with at the beginning of the game. And he mentions he has a glass eye. And later in the game, Leonard sends out an SOS... Like, hey, I found a shit ton of glass eyes. I think the guy doing this has a glass eye. Rooney, I think he has a glass eye. Guys, watch out for a guy with a glass eye. <laughs> he owns the boat and invited them on the school field trip, but that's never discussed. But, yeah, so, um, you find a glass eye, which you have to decide to take with you for the good ending. And then you find a note on his computer where he's like, "That's gross." I did this ritual, where like I slept with my daughter to have no. the, the baby ultimate being bullshit. No. <laughs> it's this horrible Why? thing. It's this horrible thing. Um, yeah. You know when the creator of something <laughs> is just a fucking train wreck, and you think, "Man, that guy's a fucking train wreck." Uh, I could totally see why through their work. This is that time. So, so Rooney, by reading this note, you know everybody likes to joke around about George R. R. Martin and the incest in Game of Thrones, which made absolutely more sense than anything in this fucking game franchise and its spinoffs. One pairing, one pairing, due to like royalty and shit. Uh, oh my god. So yeah, so, <clears throat> oh. as Rooney, if you do not find this note, you don't get the good ending. Of course you don't, because that's how survival horror so works. So you read the note, and you premise. discover that he mentions the ultimate being being born, uh, uh, which he mentions uh, Gozer and of Babylon, much like yeah. Ghostbusters, which I guess is a real thing that happened in mythology. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so Rooney somehow pieces together, oh, if I wear this fake eye that I found... It's like blessed with magic, and I'll control the scissor walker. Does she gouge her eye out? Yes. So you find Monica, and you're trapped in a corner with the scissor walker who wants to murder you, and you're like, wait! 
and you gouge out your eye and replace it with a magical fake eye and you're like, hey, Wait. go kill the guy who sent you after us. And Scissor Walker is like, okay, I love you, Rooney. And Rooney's like, I love you too, Scissor Walker. And Scissor Walker's like, I knew we had a connection. And Rooney's like, I know, babe. Because, twist ending, Scissor Walker's a woman. <laughs> so it turns out, the guy who owns the boat had a daughter. And then he was like, oh shit, my daughter's magic. I need to sleep with her to have an ultimate kid. But instead of having an ultimate kid, it turned her into the Scissor Walker magical bullshit. <laughs> His daughter's the Scissor Walker? His daughter's the Scissor Walker. Instead, they had a son who, what up, what up, is Jerome, the train conductor, <laughs> who tries to stop you for his cult dad. <laughs> so, that's all I'm And doing. this whole time, yeah. they make you believe it's Itchy from the beginning, because he wears the same clothes as Itchy, but it turns out he's not. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Wrapping it up. <laughs> so yeah, so you gouge out your eye, put in a fake eye, you punch Jerome in the face so he gets knocked out, and then you tell Scissor Walker, hey, go kill the guy who invited us on his boat. And Scissor Walker is like, yeah, he's my dad, but you know what? He, he's a dick, so I am gonna kill him. You winked at me with that glass eye just the right way. <laughs> you winked that at I'll me do with that glass eye just the right way. So yeah, and he's like, no, but I also have a glass eye. And Scissor Walker is like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> And murders him. And that's the end of the game. And it's Monica and Rooney are standing on the balcony. And Rooney's got bandages on her eye. And they get rescued by helicopters who Leonard called in Act 2. And that's the end. So, I'm gonna level with you. <laughs> and, that oh, whole thing. As Rooney, uh -huh. you, find, you find a cargo hold full of survivors who are hiding from Scissor Walker. It's all the people who pledged the Kickstarter. That's where they got in on the game. I'm so sorry if you pledged the Kickstarter and you're listening to this, because... Um... The guy who made Clock Tower, while he had a brilliant idea to start, which is... I want to stress, I did love this series. Like, I love Clock Tower... I love the Clock Tower for the SNES, and I actually love Clock Tower 3. Because the idea of a magical girl, magical girl horror setting is really fucking cool. And how they tried to carry it out was really fucking cool. I'm gonna but fucking, all the other games can go die in a fire I'm, because I'm they're I'm literally garbage. gonna do it and do it without the incest now. Thank you, yes! Because that's literally how you make it better. Do it without incest, guys. God, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna write it, um, and I'm not, I'm, 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 I gotta redeem I'm this shit. I'm sorry for the guy who wrote Clock Tower, because you know he got fucked over a lot during this. Because no. especially during Struggle Within, you know they were like, Hey, Rusty Evil's doing really well, we should put zombies in this. You know he was like... But that's not my vision. And you know they were like... No, I know, but, but Resident your Evil. vision had a lot of incest in it, so maybe turn the dial back on that. But you know what? Okay, I want to I wanna point out really quick. This is gross. No, no, no. So, the whole... In Clock Tower 3, when the grandfather is like, well, I want to be with you forever, it's meant unincestuously. No, that's not what I'm um, talking about. I'm talking about other games. Well, yeah, the other games can go, can go die in a fire. Yeah. Um, but... Clock Tower's first fear, even one and three, they're they're really not the worst games. No, the first one's fine. Right. Well, yes. Yeah. The second one is even okay. The third game's a lot better. Um. Yeah. The thing is, is what I loved about the Clock Tower series. I really want to want. Mm -hmm. I really want to talk about. Aside from all, I I brought this up as a topic for drunk fandom because I thought I thought it was a lot of fun. The thing about Clock Tower is, even though it was ridiculous. Much like Batman Ninja that we watched tonight, mm -hmm. it was fun in a lot of instances. Um, Clock Tower 2 Struggle Within and Haunting Grounds can go fuck themselves. Nightcry, um, most of it can... I feel bad for Nightcry because Nightcry tried to be a better game than it was. It's just Scissor Walker was an idiot, even though she was supposed to be a grown adult. She's such an idiot. You hide behind... A like Lego castle at one point, and she doesn't even realize you're behind it. She's a she's an idiot. So, as I've tried so, several yeah, instances um, 
That is the end of the first season of uh, well, can I Drunk just, Fandom. Can I just stress that if you want to have fun, I really do recommend giving Clock Tower a chance. It has oh yeah, really... you should, because terrible things are funny. It's fun. Yeah. I know there's a lot of things that are really bad. Mystery Science Theater Don't play Clock that. Tower Struggle Within. It's bad. Don't even play yeah. it. But, 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 but. I'm sorry. I just... You're... I just want to, I know, but I just want to stress that I didn't explain this because it's bad. I explained it because it has a lot of cool ideas behind it. Does it, that make it sense? did, it did. Um, okay, and what I up. learned is that it is a testament, the entire franchise is a testament of having a strong fucking idea and then George Lucasing it, yeah. where you just can't fucking make it work. Yeah. And maybe just having a little bit of interpretation outside of that might help. Also, but, don't name your series clock tower because you like the name and you want to name the building after it yeah basically <laughs> that's basically what i learned and that's in a it nutshell. that's clock tower and that <clears throat> is the first season of drunk fandom wait wait so what did you say you learned from it well you kept interrupting i'm sorry what did you yeah. learn from it tell me i learned that it's a convoluted mess um but is it that... more convoluted than kingdom hearts yes yes it is because at the end of Kingdom Hearts, I learned that everybody is either part of an old man or part of a young boy. At the end of Clock Tower, I learned that too many people are incestuous and cultists, and there's no cult of cool. Also, Demon Blob Baby can then proceed to shapeshift into a regular baby. Don't know how. Yeah, what's up with that? I have Edward, no idea. Edward, you suck, and, and you why make no sense. scissors? Because if it's a clock tower, then the scissors should be the hands of a clock. The scissors are Scary. No, the scissors should be a hand of the clock if it's a clock. Yeah, hour. well, yeah, that might be the point. I, I never thought about that, but that might actually be the point. Yeah. We'll never know what the guy who made Clock Tower was thinking. Because he died tragically sometime between the past and the future. Yeah. Yeah. He's still alive, I'm pretty sure. I'm so, really that was the end of the first season. We will be starting season two in a little while. Thank like you for joining us for the wild ride. I want to talk a little bit about the, the season as a whole. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, got to learn a lot of interesting stuff, even if I wasn't the interviewer. Yeah. And um, it feels great to have a project that I had dreamed about for several years finally come to fruition and see the first yeah. season done. Can't believe we're done! Yeah. It's and crazy. with that, have a, uh, have a cocktail... And relax after that because I think I might. Have a cocktail. Yeah. At the clock. How? That doesn't work that well. No. Have a cocktail because Wombat came up with that and that should be a thing. Have a cocktail. Bye have guys. A, have a cocktail. Have a cocktail. And with that, adieu. Adieu.